butt kicker. Feel what you've been missing. yours today at www.thebuttkicker.com and be sure to use promo code LSRL for 20% off. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into Daytona Motor Speedway for 200 laps here in sunny California. At least it's sunny on iRacing, not so much uh, in real life, but I'm here on uh, Extreme Sim TV. This is going to be 200 laps, at Daytona 500, presented by LSRL, uh, the butt kicker. Uh, my name is Anthony Giuliano. Joining me in the booth today is uh, Landon Quisenberry. We'll be, uh, be covering this race for you with a entirely full field of 43 drivers. So uh, going to be exciting today. Landon, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big field and a packed field tonight. And it's crazy to think there's 43 guys, 200 laps. You don't even think about, you know, how long that's going to be and how long it's going to last. There's a lot of pit strategy tonight. A lot of teams, they're going to be hooking up. You know, you got to keep it easy because you want to be there at the end. You don't want to just go out and wreck out. They do have a fast repair tonight, but you don't want to waste that early as well. So it's going to be a lot of strategy and a lot of teamwork to get each other towards the end. And, you know, it's Daytona. It's a plate race. It's going to break. You know, all hell is going to break loose there at the end. So it's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, we got a couple of great drivers in here. That's the, the neat thing about this is we have drivers uh, of all different uh, levels here in iRacing. Um, Fastest in practice was uh, Mr. Ronald Klein in the draft with a 44.83 second uh, lap as of right now on the leaderboard. In first place is Mark Mann with a 47.49. So a big drop there from the draft to uh, being by yourself. Uh, definitely not somewhere you want to be, but uh, these cars are going to be tightened up. Again, you're going to have some really, really good drivers in here. You're going to have some good uh, new drivers in here as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how they play off of each other, uh, work with each other, uh, 
bump drafting is going to be huge. Getting on the pit road is going to probably be one of the largest issues that we're going to see with some of these drivers. Can they get on the pit road safely without getting the black flag? Can they get to their pit stall without overshooting it? Uh, you know, very difficult when you're running it uh, in as a like, you know, 200 miles an hour here around Daytona Motor Speedway. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of different strategies that are going to be going on here. They do have six sets of tires. Um, that one fast repair, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm hoping they don't have to use it, but I'm assuming they will. So we'll uh, we'll just have to see how it goes as we wind down uh, with about 30 seconds left here in practice. Uh, once we get that done, we'll roll through your starting lineup. Just looking at the drivers here too, uh, you know, some of these drivers we know, some we do not. Again, being from the LSRL, some of these guys run with us and have run with us in the past. So I uh, can tell you right now, you know, Michael Jean sitting up at the top. He's part of Elliott, um, uh, or I'm sorry, Sadler. Uh, Motorsports running with Elliott Sadler, Hermie Sadler, those guys. Um, Daniel Smallwood's always fast. I see him up at the top. Mitchell Reeves, always fast. I see him up there in the top. Ronald, uh, Ronald Klein, again, first, you know, fastest in practice. He is going to be a guy that will – will sit back there, do what he has to do. He's, he's going to be there at the end. He's that kind of driver. Um, so, you know, a lot of these other guys, uh, you know, it's first time seeing them, but uh, we, we know there are going to be some fast ones in here. So very interesting. Yeah, a lot of unknowns going into this one. And um, it's been crazy, too. I mean, you know, we know Ronald, but I've never actually seen Ronald race. He's been in the booth for the Xfinity Series for us and commentating but they've never actually seen them on track so it's gonna be interesting to see a lot of these guys you know racing with against each other for the first time and a lot of guys that have been around each other for a long time as well oh yeah he's he's sneaky uh sneaky fast um he's gonna come come from nowhere but he can hang around he's a heck of a wheel man so uh, as they start the grid we'll start the starting uh or we'll set the lineup for you here um in just a second on row one, we have uh, Mark Mann and Michael Jeans. On row two, we will have Rick Siderban and Brandon Holder. Row three will consist of Daniel Smallwood and Brad Meir. Row four will be Dustin Covington and Anthony English. Row five, Reed Christensen and Mitchell Reeves. Take it from there. All right, starting up in row six, we're going to have Jonathan Cross and Justin Rambo. In row number seven, we should have... We have Ira Kolhas and Ronald Klein. Row eight will consist of Scotty Shedd and Tyler McWhorter. And we have row number nine consisting of Brandon Massey and Andrew Cowart. And then row 10, we have Eric Barrell and Craig Lavelle. Then coming in in row 11, you have Matt Newborn and Ryan Williams. Row 12 will be Dustin, got to pronounce his last name right, Slider, and Todd Seaborn. Uh, Michael Parks and Wyatt Seaborn, spelled completely different row after that. Row 14, you're going to have, let me make sure, going to get it lost there. Actually, row 15, Pete Pellini and Skylar Brown. Row 16, we'll have Michael Larch and Mark Brown. Row 17, we will have Matthew Moniak and Tony Romack. Row 18, will be Justin Rideout and Brian Conover. Row 19 will be Matthias Swamp and Ed Fowler. Row 20 will be Dan Witt, Jeff Glockner. Row 21 will be David Douthwaite and Randy Sally. Rounding it out, we have on the very last row, Lance Thompson. Just going to ride it out and see how he does. 
So that's your field for today, guys. We're going to see how these guys look out there on the track. Man, it looks beautiful having that many cars on the track at one time. I hope they look as, as good as they do right now, uh, 100 laps, and we're going green here at Daytona. Michael Jeans is going to take it down into turn one. So far, so good. Everybody's kind of getting settled out, learning what everybody's doing and coming down the back stretch again. So, so far, so good. No wrecks. Here we go. Coming down the back stretch. It's still Michael Jeans in the lead. Yeah, right now, Mark Mann Manning, the bottom side, the top side did not get going at all on that restart. They all kind of fanned out and jumped back down to the bottom. So it's going to be interesting to see if anyone's going to try and make moves early or just kind of ride it out single file. So Mann going to maintain the lead from the pole and lead lap number one here at Daytona. Yeah, and you're going to see, uh, you're going to see Smallwood and Jeans and those guys try to hook up. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how they continue to run this thing here. Yeah, I don't expect much early. It's it's very early on in the race. All these guys are pretty much going to be single filed out. They're going to be riding in the train for the most part. You don't want to wreck yourself early, but you also kind of want to put yourself up there in contention. And you want to make sure you have separation because coming to pit road with a group of cars at 200 miles per hour is very difficult. So they have to make sure they execute correctly throughout the race tonight absolutely and i want to make a correction in case i did mess that up mark mann is in the lead with uh rick sybrin's right behind him daniel smallwood is going to fall in there dustin covington anthony english reed christensen michael jeans mitchell reeves jonathan cross and michael crouch rounding out the top 10 as of right now guys really holding that bottom line all the way through kind of breaking out there Getting a little bump draft down the back stretch. Let's see if that outside line can pick up some speed coming here to the start finish line. Yeah, so far they've kept it very clean. It's going to be super calm right now. The thing is, you also want to make sure you don't lose this lead draft at all as man continues to lead. They're going to try and stay lined up single file for the most part. Right when we get around the halfway point is where I expect everyone to start making moves, but we'll see. Obviously, pit road and an accident could occur. Bump drafting, that's a huge thing tonight as well, is if you can maintain a bump draft and hit the guy in front of you square for 200 laps, it's very tough. And the cup cars get huge runs with this new aero package they have, so it's going to be very interesting to see how these guys are going to handle it. Yeah, and as we say that, we see Scotty Shedd pop out to the outside. He's trying to pick up. Uh, the 20s looks like the 26 car behind him. Not sure that number's matching up on our screen here, but not looking like he's getting any help, but there is some help coming from behind. And that looks like it's in the form of Andrew Coart and Craig Lavelle. We do have a caution. Take a look to see where that's at. I'm not seeing anything at the moment. We'll find Looks out. Looks like Michael Perks in the number 38 car, I believe. Yep. Looks like Michael Perks got, um, got into Wyatt Seaburn there. Coming down that front stretch and, yep, just uh, tangled up. Got a good bit of the field there in the back, and man, it really caused a ruckus. One car goes flying back there. I'm sure he's going to use that uh, that fast repair. So, just like that, you can see we get off to a good uh, good six laps, and then you, it just takes one uh, one person to slip up, man, and it just will cause havoc at this track. Unfolded and a lot of good guys already going to have to use their fast repairs early. And like I said, that's going to be huge tonight because now with all these guys getting involved in a wreck early, they're going to be on edge for the rest of the race and not want to make as many bold moves as the guys up front. So that's a huge setback for a lot of these guys that got involved. I agree. So 
as they kind of get it settled out here and get the field settled out going to pit stops, we're going to pause for a uh, for a commercial here. So and we'll be back to uh, to join you as soon as this is over. We'll kind of sort out the uh, the lineup after that. So stick with us and we'll be right back. Butt kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Get yours today at www.thebuttkicker.com and be sure to use promo code LSRL for 20% off. And welcome back to the Daytona 500 presented by LSRL, Wilder Graphics, and Butt Kicker. We've had a set of stops after the first caution here that occurred in the first couple of laps. Uh, that would be lap number five. So a lot of guys already taken out. That was about 10 or so cars that were involved in that one. Uh, and that's going to change a lot of the field. So some guys pitted, a lot has stayed out here. So, so far your leader at the moment is the 48 of Dustin Covington. Yeah, so a lot of guys even up at the front came in, um, probably to top off on some fuel, maybe some strategy there. Highly doubt they took tires, being that they only had six in the pits. Uh, but uh, yeah, that puts Dustin Covington, uh, Mitchell Reeves was up there, Scotty Shedd, Ronald Klein, Ira Kolhas, Brandon Massey, Michael Crouch, Justin Rambo, Andrew Coward, Craig Lavelle round out the top 10. Mark Mann was leading up there for a while. He drops back all the way to 11th. Daniel Smallwood right behind him. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of guys that are moving around in the pack. Um, you know, again, hopefully those guys are able to use that fast repair, learn from the mistakes they made there. Uh, get some long green, uh, green flag laps going on here. Yeah, they're all double filed back up down here on the back straightaway awaiting the restart. Yeah, and once again, a lot of those guys, now they're just going to be riding. Uh, they got that because, once again, you use that fast repair, you're done. <laughs> once you get in another wreck, you have to wait out your repairs. And that's not... Oh, we got a problem with the five. He's dropping out of line. That would be the five of Scotty Shedd. Unsure if he was not lined up in the correct position or what, but some sort of issue with the five car here. Yeah, so um, what happens here is a lot of times, and it's a it's a thing with i racing. If drivers are going to miss a wreck, uh, they have to get a they get a black flag, and they end up with an EOL. But we're going back green here. Uh, looks like uh, kind of an odd start again. But, uh, yeah, we've got a we've got a bunch of guys trying to sort this out. All uh, all the first four or five drop to the bottom as we go into one and two. Yeah, almost a five-car breakaway from that restart, and I'm looking at the top three, and they're all teammates. They have similar paint schemes, that being Covington, Reeves, and Klein, and then the two behind them being Kolhas and Crouch. So 
Not sure if they played any games on the restart to have that happen, so they all get lined up, but it worked out in their favor because they have a top three right now here at Daytona. Yeah, a lot of things going on right here with these guys trying to get sorted out again. They're getting back in line. Looks like that second group's going to catch up, but man, you know, these guys again getting used to a couple of the rules here. You know, if, if you do get that right, right, you are going to be here well. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these deals where learning uh, uh, the system and, you know, having to deal with iRacing at the same time is a little bit different. But, at the end of the day, you still got a wheel, you still got four tires, and you're on some pavement at Daytona. Just go have some fun. So, uh, interesting to see him come down the back stretch here. Going into turn one and two, those teammates are still together Dustin Covington, Mitchell Reeves, Ronald Klein. Those are all guys that are from uh, Loose Lug Nuts, sponsored by Over the Top Designs. Um, again, those those guys are always going to be fast and uh, up front. So, so, good to see them running together and staying out front. Yeah, that teamwork's going to be huge. They're already found themselves up together early. And, you know, we've seen from races before, it's as much as it's very easy to get shuffled around here at these play tracks, when you find your friends early, it's very hard to separate you. So they've set themselves up for a pretty good spot here later in the race. We got some guys, the 37 is now ducked up to the outside to see if they can get a run going. Starting to get a challenge. The top five did break away, but everyone's kind of closed that gap back up. That started with the 556. But it's going to be very interesting to see if anyone's actually going to challenge these three up towards the front or kind of let it play out. Yeah, that 37 car, Daniel Smallwood, is one I mentioned pre-race together. You know, he's always going to be pretty fast. You know, Brandon Massey right behind him. Um, he, he's, a, he's a pretty good wheel man as well. So I, I expect to see that group as they are doing right now to make some pushes on that outside line as they come up into that uh, fifth and sixth spot. They got a little bit of help with the uh, 36 car of Todd Seaburn. Uh, I'm trying to see who else that is behind. It looks like Craig LaBelle behind him. So those guys are going to split off. And, you know, if, these, if they get a little bit more comfortable with each other, we, we might even see, oh, wow, that 26 car jumps right up in. in and it causes there, an you know. accident. And the 36 cuts right back down in the field, and we got a big one again. Yeah, he's... He, just looking at the uh, live play there, he was trying to get up into that outside line. It looks like he couldn't really uh, keep control of the car. Got tapped, and, um, and there he goes. So he got up into that wall, came down, and looks like he got into the 356 car, I believe, if that's right. And, you know, from there, it's just chaos at Daytona. Yeah, I mean, nowhere for a lot of these guys to go. You commit to a line, and... It just all unfolds. There's not really, it's not like Dover or another place where the, the track kind of cleans itself in one direction. It just goes all over the place with the speeds here at Daytona. And, and really unfortunate for these guys because, again, now they are already set back. They're using their fast repair, and there may even been some guys that have already used their fast repairs early that have gotten in this and are going to have to play the waiting game with their uh, pit crew to fix it. Yeah, no doubt. And it, it just takes some. Uh... It is a lot of skill to uh, to see an outside line come up like that, even if there is a hole that you can jump into. Jumping in a, in a hole with guys that have momentum at this track is very, very uh, difficult to do. Uh, may mis, misjudge the, the wind coming off of both of those cars, got a little tight or arrow loose. You, you never know what happens there. doesn't take much in these cars going that fast and kind of skating around this track really cause havoc. Yeah, and you really got a feel for Todd Seaburn. I mean, he was just riding up there following that line. Not really much he could do. I mean, if he lets off, he does what he does there, and he gets loose just from from having to jam on the brake so hard and it sent him around. Or, you know, he gets put up in the wall by the 26, and then that could cause some other people to run into him. So, I mean, a lot of innocent bystanders and maybe a little bit too aggressive here early. I thought they would kind of keep it calm this early in the race but they have it when we're already on lap 12 we have two cautions it's a 200 lap race these guys have got to settle down if they want to be there at the end yeah long race and that's that's the biggest thing with this deal is you're not going to win it on lap one you're not going to win it on lap five and you know that's very difficult like i said at the beginning of the race we're going to have some really really um, experienced drivers who know that and they're going to sit in the back or they're going to be way up front they're not, they're not going to stay in the middle of the pack long 
um, then we're going to have some inexperienced drivers that um, are going to try and make a lot of moves early that probably shouldn't make instead of staying in line. You know, falling to the back here as long as you're in the draft and you have a clean car uh, at the end of the race, if you're still there and, uh, uh, you know, within 10 laps to go and you're in the draft with a clean car, you, you've got a chance to win this thing. So, uh, yeah, definitely have to settle down and uh, get used to everybody around them and just uh, and just run this thing out. Yeah, and then you got to look at those guys that, that are teammates that went up there early. I mean, look at the loose lug nut squad up in the top three right now. They they got up there, they put themselves in a single file spot, and then got away from the carnage early, and they look really smart doing it. You know, if you're going to be up there, you have to be really calm and wait for those moves to kind of happen. You got to be really smart. But obviously, there is a fast repair, so that does change the mindset of some guys. So it, it's probably going to calm down a lot of those aggressive guys now that they've they've been in an accident. You know, but the thing is, that's something that's another thing that drivers have to, you know, challenge themselves is letting go of something like that happening. You know, if you get in a wreck early, you can't let it bother you for the rest of the race, especially with one that you have a fast repair. You have a second chance. Yeah. And, you know, going into these races and as a part of the uh, admin crew at Lightspeed Racing League, the LSRL, and that's one thing we talk about is, is adding that fast repair. And other stuff that's because you get a lot of drivers that haven't been around each other. They don't know what each other do. Uh, how one driver drives compared to another. So, you know, having that fast repair is good, but you go and put two or three fast repairs in there, and you got guys that feel like they're just going to go uh, all out and they're going to do it the whole race because they can lean back on them. So, having one is good. Um, having two gets a little more difficult there. But uh, so now, hopefully, it looks like everybody's car is relatively clean as it's going through the field here. But uh, you're right with the, those three teammates up there. Um, another one that's going to be kind of sneaky is the uh, 14 of Eric Borelli. And he's another one out of the LSRL team, a small way, and it's going to be right with him. But Michael Reeves and Ronald Klein, uh, fastest in practice, Mr. Ronald Klein, and again, bring him, uh, bring him to green. And uh, going to be very, uh, very interesting to see how long they can stay out front without getting a run from somebody else. And, Hopefully uh, these guys can learn really quick, stay in line and work with each other and find a partner and go. Yeah, they're going to be hoping they do the exact same on this restart. Pace car pulls down pit road and we are back. Green flag racing here at Daytona. Again, Covington and get going. Good jump by him. The O2 is going to jump back down between Covington and Klein. And then the 65 was also able to jump down from that outside lane to the bottom. So once again, the outside has not gotten going on these restarts. Michael Crouch getting stuck up there. Thought Eric really was going to hang with him, but he drops down low now right in front of him. It looks like we have Ira Plas jumps up and tries to catch that draft, so maybe they'll work together. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of guys are going to love that bottom line here. Um, depends on their steering ratios. And that's one thing we didn't talk about. Really. These guys are you know, going through here. We can talk about some of the guys and the equipment they have, but they are really having a tight steering ratio here at Daytona is one thing that a lot of people don't know. Right now, it seems to be working out for the 26 and the 29 car as they're going to the front. And it looks like, ooh, there's going to be one that jumps right up there in front of them. That looks like Daniel Smallwood. That was Daniel Smallwood, I believe. Yep, he's going to take it to the outside. Smallwood with a big push to Massey, so now they're going to challenge these loose lug nut guys up to the front. This is a huge run, so this could get two lanes going, so we'll see if anyone else is going to hop up to the high line and we're going to go two by two throughout the field. Yeah, and if they're, if they're smart, they're going to stay there. That outside line, typically at Daytona, it's not going to be Get up there and they could the bottom line could get freight train right now. Um, but, you know with with ira kohas and, and it's like craig lobel it, it, it's possible the, the low line is obviously the fast line but um, if they can stay in that outside line pretty much for the most part going to stay up front and stay clean if smallwood clears here though don't be shocked if he drops low uh, he's he's going to try and get up there and get a run and, and drop, but man, they are really tight here. 
Yeah, that's something that Smallwood is definitely going to be hoping for, is if Massey's going to get clear of these guys in the bottom, he doesn't just jump down immediately, you know? That's something, too. You got to hope you tr that the guy in front of you, you trust them. You don't want them to abandon you, because then, you know, moods are going to be sour. Race car drivers remember everything, and I am guarantee you if Massey jumps to the bottom, if Smallwood is able to get him clear, then he's going to remember that and not push him to the front later on. Yeah, and then you can just see the speed that these guys are carrying down the back stretch, man. I mean, they are really wicked fast. And, you know, from the different views that we have, the chopper view here really shows that you know, staying in line and how these cars bounce around is so difficult. And it's the same way in real life. And, you know, you can see that the pros do it, and they're three wide going around the turn here. And it's just amazing, but it does take a lot more talent than one would think to get around this track. But Daniel Smallwood still hanging in there. Those first three uh, loose lug nut cars up there doing a great job staying together. It looks like we got some chatter on, on race chat. The guys working with each other, they don't know each other. So, you know, that's where it gets fun in races like this, where they can just uh, sit back and learn what somebody's in front of or, or behind them is doing and, and kind of work with them. And, and they might make a new friend and they might make a new enemy. You never know. Yeah, this place will build and break friendships and it being a big race like the 500 and, and something we didn't talk about as well is that these plate races you know from a driver's standpoint there's so much adrenaline that goes on there's so much that is in your mind during these times that you're just sitting here it doesn't seem like much because you're just riding around behind some people and you're kind of in the same spot but you're thinking of everything at 200 miles per hour it's a huge mind game and i honestly don't know how they're going to handle it as you see smallwood jump down to the bottom to separate the lug nut guys there so like I said, there's the partnerships kind of breaking up between Massey and Smallwood. I thought maybe Massey would be the one that do it, not Smallwood. But you got to think, and we're under caution here, but as I was saying, you got to think a lot of going through the minds of these guys in 200 laps, it's a long time. And it looks like that was uh, the number 38 again. Um, not quite sure what happened. We'll just kind of roll it back there. Uh, but looks like Michael Perks was involved in some way, shape, or form. We'll see if we can we can roll back that footage and see exactly what happened. Yeah, it looks like he got in the, in the apron there, going in and uh, just kind of lost control. And just really could not gather about taking some guys out. So Michael Perks, uh, two wrecks here early that kind of put him in a bad position where he has a uh, pretty banged up car now. Probably doesn't have a whole lot of friends on the track. Not a whole lot of friends and not a whole lot of insurance either. That fast repair is gone from the first incident. I thought he would have been okay if he would have just hit the wall. You know, there'd been a little bit of right side damage. But when he came down and clipped the six, that brought him back up. And he's definitely going to have some front end damage from that too. So just a huge mistake. And, and now he's really got to hope that, that car is not airily challenged enough to where he's going to be able to keep up with the pack. Absolutely. And, you know, these drivers in, in this race, you know, this being an open race, uh, there are no damage limits and things of that nature like a standard I race would have. So what he really has to be paying attention here uh, to Michael Perks and in the driver's meeting, they'll go over this, but in, in this league, it's a, it's a one, two, three offense deal. So, that's the second time he's been in an accident that's caused an issue, and I would not be surprised if the admin uh, black flag him here, put him at the end of the, the line, and he has an issue again, and maybe even now. Um, that he, he may be disqualified from this race for not being able to control that car, which is unfortunate, but, uh, you know, that's part of the deal when you got 43 guys out there. Um, you you want to keep everybody's nose clean, and uh, if we got one driver that is just uh, having a hard time and getting under that apron. And it looks like he just clipped that apron, which is not the place you want to be here at Daytona. You really want to keep all four tires on the black here. Um, you know, again, he's going to be in a tough spot, not only uh, with, uh, with with what's going on, but again, yeah, I mean, there you go. It's He is going to be disqualified from the race for uh, for that accident. It's what we're getting from the, uh, the admins. So, you know, that's uh, that's unfortunate. But, you know, again, for the safety and everything of everybody else's race, uh, you know, sometimes it's necessary. But uh, we'll go back to green here shortly. And it looks like the leader 
is going to be Dustin Covington, Mitchell Reeves, and Brandon Massey will be up there. So that that one group that was up there running good kind of got broken up a little bit. So we'll see how they uh, we'll see how they sort it out as we come to green. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. They lost their their third man in that group being Ronald Klein. He had ended up dropping back behind, I believe, two or three cars. Uh, that would be two cars. That'd be Crouch and Massey that he's behind. So now you got to think, how are Covington and Reeves going to be able to navigate this restart? Is he going to let? Is Covington going to let Reeves in front of him, or is he going to try and see if he can get enough gap between him and Massey to where he can get the O2 behind him? So this really kind of hurt their strategy with putting Klein behind them because when you have that third guy that's with you and knows what y'all are doing. You, you can pretty execute that pretty well because Klein is the one that controls a lot of that with that second row. Not so much anymore. Yeah, absolutely. But I wouldn't expect it to take too long for Klein to come back up there, um, you know, get hooked up with those guys and uh, get back into that lane. Um, you know, just really got a feel for some of these guys. You know, we've got a couple of guys that are a lap down, two laps down, and some that are already out of the race. And, uh, you know, just a tough break some of these guys that came in here with high expectations and a lot of practice. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's Daytona, baby. That's what happens. Yeah, and the part that is even more tough about it, and you think, you know, they everyone that came in here came in to win. I mean, you know, they made an investment to be in this race. They all, you know, paid money to be in here. And, you know, that's kind of the thing that is going to sit back on their mind, too, is going to be like, I should have raced a lot smarter because I should have made that a lot more worthwhile to myself. And then, you know, the winner getting a butt kicker too. There's a lot that is a lot of positives to winning this race and being there at the end and, you know, kind of just throwing it away early is got to be a huge disappointment for these guys. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, that butt kicker gamer too is, is something that everybody's racing here for uh, even second place receiving $75 and third $50. Um, you know, it's, it, it's a, it's a lot to race for, even if you're, you know, in this race of third place. Um, but uh, very hard to do when you don't have a car. But as they bring them, uh, bring them around, the pace car is going to drop off. Dustin Covington is going to get a huge jump. It looks like the, the bottom line just did not go right there. Bring the mask, not get the jump that he wanted. But heading into turn one, you're going to see Dustin Covington and Mitchell Reeves just kind of break away. Uh, in there, Ronald Fine, you're going to see him coming really quick. Wouldn't be shocked if he bounced to the outside. But nope, he's going to stick where he's at. He hit with his, he's going to get with his buddies going out the backstretch and uh, let that let that car Massey go. Yeah, Massey did not really execute that the way he wanted to. He leaned back on Covington, which just allowed him to absolutely gap him on the restart. Because if I was in his shoes, I would have kind of laid up on the 48 a little bit to make sure that O2 couldn't jump down there if I got a good enough start. And then on top of that, he had their teammate behind him and then went to the outside. So I just don't know. But, I mean, it's early, too, so it doesn't really matter. But you got to think later in the race, that has to be playing in your mind who the guys you, uh, you're racing around and what they're going to do. And he's going to get a – at least now he's opened his eyes and know what those guys are going to do in this situation later on in the race. Yeah, and even further back, man, we've got some guys that are just really pushing. You know, Scotty Shedd is back there in the number five car, the number four car. Uh, you know, really getting kicked down below the line there. I mean, it's, it's still guys racing just a little bit too hard, uh, too soon. You might start seeing some guys drop back and, and breaking into a second larger pack, uh, staying well, well away from from the guys up front. So, um, you know, again, coming across that tri we still got those three team, teammates. They're going to stay in that position. They're going to be smart. They're going to play their cards right, stay in that position. Um, bumper to bumper the whole time, not give up anything as long as they can. But we might start seeing some other cars drop back in control. Yeah, I would give that to Massey. It did seem like a mistake when the restart had happened, but it's almost worked out in his favor. A lot of these guys that are up front have now kind of realized these top three are going to stick with each other no matter what. They're kind of ride or die right now. And that is big because now they're starting to have the whole pack turn on them. A lot of these guys just jumping up to the top saying, Get these guys out of the lead, please. And also got to point out, Smallwood was one of the few that came down under or under caution on that pit sequence, and he's back up to the front already in this outside lane. 
Yeah, it doesn't shock me at all with uh, the way he drives. He, he is not the guy that's going to sit back there and ride. He wants to be out front and, uh, and breaking away from the pack. Um, you know, there, there's some other guys back here that are going to run a little bit different. And, uh, I'll be interested. I'm going to jump back to the 08 car, Michael Jeans, and see how he's doing. And, um, if he's uh, if he's if he's doing all right, he's he's going to be one to look look out for here going uh, going into the later parts of the race. Yeah, Michael Jean's a, you know, just a great competitor. And what we kind of missed when you went back there to check up on him is that uh, Cole Haas was able to give Massey enough of a shove to get up in front of him. And he took it, got to the bottom. And now Cole Haas looking to lead that Massey got up to the front. The outside has starting to gain some momentum and they're looking a lot better than the inside. A lot more formed with less cards. Yeah, still just humming around 194 miles an hour right now. I mean, you're going to see Brandon Massey jump down low. And we're going to take it three wide here. Oh, my goodness. We're going to take – oh, please stay out of the wall right here. That looks like the, that the 37 car. You're going to have to help me out with that one. I can't tell if that is Dustin Covington. Oh, and we have a Hi. slow car slow car that they have to get around to so really 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 difficult there wow yeah i'm trying to figure out i think that's just a car that has a custom number that is not yeah that's the 97 okay it's just very similar to the 37 that's the 97 of uh brian conover just completely abandoned everyone on the top side and and went to the middle there and that really kind of shook things up with them going by that lap car and then you know conover pulling that move because now the bottom looks way more formed than the top Oh, and he cuts yeah. off the O2. There's trouble. The yellow flag is out. And then Ronald Klein, nowhere to go. Huge impact for him. So we're going to probably have to take a look to see what started all that. We know it started with the 97, but wow, I did not expect to see that. It looked like they were going to calm down after catching the lap car. They got kind of separated. and It just never happened. They still kept the energy that they had. Yeah, just uh, very, again, yep, got that car that comes down, just sends him up into the wall. I mean, just very, very aggressive, way too early in the race still. Um, guys that just don't have a lot of control over the car right now and just got to really learn how to buckle down and and strap in. Uh, yeah, the, the slow car looked to be one that was falling to the back for connection issues, and you know, that was difficult. But, um uh, yeah, just incredibly racy right now. Exciting for us, but not so much for some of the drivers in the field right now. So, again, we go uh, under caution again for, I believe, the third or fourth time here at lap 31 of a 200-lap race. So, hopefully these guys get it figured out quickly. Yeah, and that was super unfortunate. It kind of cleaned itself up towards the top, and it felt I feel bad for Ronald Klein because... Klein had saw it, it started to clean itself up to the top, so he jumped down to the apron, but unfortunately his teammate had clipped Conover, and then he had ended up putting Conover on top of his hood with the impact because Conover had spun to the inside. So just, again, you commit to a lane, try to avoid it, and then you just get involved, and it's very unfortunate for these guys. Yeah, and Brian Conover is going to be charged with the penalty there, the 97, and he's going to he's going to be dropped to the back of the line here with an EOL end of the line penalty is uh, what that means. So, um, yeah, going to be uh, interesting. We already see some guys without bumpers. And, you know, that's another thing here at Daytona. If they can't keep a minimum speed, uh, you know, that's going to be difficult for them to do it. They'll ask to be a, uh, parking it for the for the night and taking it to the hauler. So, um, you know, right, right now, like I said, Conover is going to be charged, drop it to the back. You'll see him drop to the back here. He's not going to be too happy about it, but, uh, it's part of the race and deal. And, um, you know, again, we're going to see who, how these teammates do up front and who can uh, who can stay out, who pits, and how they end up come out and shake down, coming down the back stretch uh, for the green flag. Yeah, and that's super unfortunate, too. That's the last thing those loose lug nut guys wanted. And thinking about it, too, as soon as those guys had finally gotten split up by everyone in the pack, then the wreck happens, and then two of their guys are involved in it. So... Just a tough break. You know, obviously, uh, Covington was able to get out of it pretty smooth. I mean, he wasn't even, you know, a part of that. But 
just unfortunate. A lot of guys, then I looked down pit road and there was a ton of issues on pit road. A lot of guys missing their box and having to avoid other guys on pit roads. It's Daytona, no matter where you are, is a crazy place as long as you're on the asphalt part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just um, going to be interesting. I'm listening over race chat at the same time of, uh, you know, they've got two spotters in here uh, under race control uh, working through all of these accidents and having to go through all of these replays and seeing who's going where and who caused what accident to move them here and there. So a lot of things to, to pay attention to along with cars that might have bad connections. You know, the winter storms that are coming through the U.S., it's a real thing right now where some were without power or losing power and their connection's not that great. So, you know, some guys are going to be dropping to the back for what looks like no reason, but uh, the reason being that they don't have a great connection right now. And just a whole slew of different things going on. Obviously a minimum speed of 170 miles an hour. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for some of these cars. So you'll start to see some of those guys pull off, you know, and, and it may just take some of these cars to, uh, to pull off of the track before, you know, we really get a, a long green flag run in here, uh, which is again unfortunate. But the 43 cars at Daytona, it's still it's again fun for us to watch, um, fun for the guys at the front, just not fun for the guys that are involved in these accidents or or just riding close by, minding their own business. Absolutely. So Andrew uh, Coart is the one that has taken the lead in the 556 off of that sequence of hitting and then beside him will be the 24 of that's going to be yep oh so sorry i'm having a little bit of issues i'm getting through it right now but yeah that's the 24 of jeff glockner third is uh todd seaburn and then rick seabrands in fourth fifth being brandon massey and i want to point out the 556 65 and 31 all teammates probably trying to look to hook up the same way that the loose lug nice guys did. And they're all right up there in the top eight. Absolutely. Just um, going through the field now, you'll start to see the guys, you know, that, that are not on the lead lap or near the back. Um, I see the, looks like the O2 car. I'm trying to see who that is. And that is Mitchell Reeves. One of the faster ones out there has some damage to the back of his car doesn't look like he's going to be able to fix that. Uh, he, he must have already used his fast repair, but he is with his buddy Ronald Klein. We're going to see how much does that affect him throughout the rest of the race. You know how how is he going to be able to stay with the pack if he's going to be able to stay with the pack? So a lot of things are going to start to happen here. It's going to be very interesting. A lot of fast drivers have some damage as we uh, go back to green. Yeah, and that was the first restart. We've kind of seen the outside had the advantage. Once those loose lug nut guys have taken over the lead, they had had the bottom control these restarts. That time, the top with a 24 taking the lead in the top just has more momentum right now. So maybe, you know, a changing of the tides here between what lane is the best right now. Yeah, absolutely. And just, uh, you know, riding in the chase mode with some of these guys, if, um, you know, you pull up the camera mode, I'm... I'm just look at uh, like Andrew Cohort, you know, that's one guy, uh, you know, you seeing them in the, in the camera view is one thing, but really getting in that chase mode um, and seeing how much these cars move around and dance in these corners, it really gives you a good perspective of what these drivers are seeing, or even in in car mode, any of those just give you an idea of what they're seeing and how much these cars are moving around. And you got to be aware of not only the car in front of you and behind you, but the car to the left or the right of you and, and the car in front of that person or behind that person. So a lot going on and a lot to figure out. Uh, oh man, as Andrew Cohart, again, one guy that clips that apron going into turn three and four. And it's just, it's one of those deals where you don't know uh, what's going to happen. We have one driver that's having connection issues which looks like uh, the, the car of uh, Brandon Massey, he was, he's going to have to drop to the back coming uh, down the straightaway. Yeah, if Massey cannot get that connection fixed, the, you know, the race control will tell him to drop out, and there he goes, which is very unfortunate because those guys had finally found themselves. They found their dancing partners, and as soon as they do, one of their teammates starts to have connection issues, and then he has to drop to the back. So... 
it's just unfortunate because once you finally get, you know, your group going and, you know, that group of guys you want to be with, something like that can happen. And it's just very unfortunate. Yeah, now new guys got to find new dance partners, you know, but, uh, you know, still strolling through the field here. You got some guys that have some really good looking cars. Uh, then you come back to Scotty Shedd, who's been uh, tangled up in an accident or two. And he's still hanging up there in the top 10, dropping down to the low line. And, uh, you know, these guys just really pushing the envelope. But uh, even with some damage, it looks like these guys are still, you know, if it's a rear damage, they should be okay. Front damage is really going to hurt these guys in the long run. But, um, you know, just holding that wheel straight as long as they can, uh, sticking with a good partner is going to be key for the rest of this race. As we see in a guy that we haven't really seen up towards the front take the lead, that's Eric Barisle in the 14 sim seat Chevrolet, I believe. Very hard to tell you from yeah, the blend view, but Eric is sponsored by uh, Sim Seats and does a really good job. Just got back into iRacing. Um, really has an incredible rig set up. We're going to have a slow car on the outside here uh, as they go by that slow car. Looks like the 26 car. I'm not sure exactly who that is. They're probably going to be asked to, to park it for the night. But um, you know, Eric has a, a great setup, uh, a lot of skill, a lot of time in the seat. You know, again, one of those guys that, oh, is, oh we're going to see oh, there goes the 63. 63 car. And it's going to put a lot of cars. Wow. The 15 car, Dustin Slider just went through the roof. I mean, he ended up on top of the gate. That was even unfortunate there. The 556, it kind of stopped to, you know, just make sure he didn't get hit anymore. And then the 66 did not see him coming and then ran into him. That was uh, Matthias Swank there. Unfortunate for him to even get involved. And that's very, very frustrating when a car is dead stopped on the apron and then you just run into the back of him. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, again, unfortunate to see some of those guys. But, uh, I mean, it's, it is wild what can happen here and how quick it can happen. Looks like Eric Barlow, he's still going to be uh, in first trying to catch the pace car here. Um, pulling up to the pace car, coming out of two. They really got to pay attention to what's going on. Hard checkup coming out of two. But yeah, that, that spin right there, sent some cars. Oh, man, that is a huge flip by the 15 car. Uh, you know, thank God this is sim racing for sure, because that would not have been pretty in real life. No, not really fun either. Uh, the frustration of getting involved in an accident is still very real, though, and that's tough because now, at this point, with the amount of accidents we've had, I really don't even know who really has fast repairs left, and I'll probably find out shortly enough because a lot of those guys are either going to retire or just have a lot of damage to overcome. Yeah, you're going to see some cars with a lot of damage. If you see a car now that's already gone to the pit and still has some rear end or front end damage, um, they've already used that fast repair, and it's it's going to be difficult. You know, the guys that are lucky enough to keep their nose clean through uh, the end of this race, they're going to be the ones that are up front battling for that lead at the end. Um, you know, an unfortunate way for some of these guys to figure out you know, how tough it is to drive against 43 drivers at Daytona, but you know, the guys up front, you know, again, doing a great job. Sneaky sitting up there. You, you've got, you know, Pete Polini, a guy we hadn't talked about, Jeff Glockner, Jonathan Cross, those guys just been kind of hanging around. Tony Romack is another one that's, uh, you know, just coming back into iRacing with a ton of experience, but just kind of minds his own business throughout the race and, and does his thing. Hopefully he doesn't, doesn't get caught up in a wreck and, uh, and it can get through the race with no issues. Uh, but sometimes if you're too far back, you get caught up into something like this, you know, seeing that slow motion of the 15 car here hitting the wall, man, he really took a ride going up, uh, sending a lot of cars down below the apron. Everybody starts to check up. I mean, just a, just a wild ride and guys, again, just sitting there minding their own business have absolutely nowhere to go at 200 miles an hour. Yeah, it's been a pretty wild one. There's some other guys I haven't seen that are kind of riding in the back, but have pretty clean race cars, like the number 20 of 
Justin Rambo. He's been pretty clean. Haven't said much about him. Haven't seen him much. I saw him earlier in the race when they were all kind of single filed out towards the back of the field. But, uh, you know, as long as he, you know, keeps his car very clean, he's going to be in pretty good shape because there's just a lot of guys that are just with torn up race cars right now. Yeah, they're trying to figure out who's where and, and who's in front of who right now. And, uh, you know, it's it's a lot going on. So, you know, again, the the, mon- the, the guys monitoring the race, our tower control, doing a great job, uh, you know, getting these guys sorted out where they need to be. You'll see them trying to get them staggered under caution. That's one thing that uh, happens in this league because, you know, guys are sitting there, uh, you know, adjusting their brake bias or, or whatever, talking to their teammates, you know, you, it only takes one slip up in these cars under pace to, to run into the guy in front of you and mess his night up. So, um, you know, they stagger, uh, stagger into that caution. Then they start catching up two by two. As we come back to green here, uh, we are sitting here. You'll have to help me out with the laps there. Oh, we got 40. We're in 42 laps in. So it's going to be 42. Yeah. Got a, got a long ways to go here, but you know, they're, they're starting to get uh, settled down, coming down the back stretch. And again, now they're again, once again, getting familiar with who's around them. Who am I going to work with? How am I going to work with them? And how fast is he? Uh, who took tires? Who didn't? Who, who has damage? Who doesn't? You know, the top three out of the top four cars have some rear end damage. Uh, you know, just very interesting to see what's going to happen and unfold over the next uh, 150 plus laps. And a lot of moving pieces and comers and goers, too. I mean, look, look at who's in fourth right now. I mean, Mark Mann, he started on the pole, and we haven't really talked about him since he dropped back from the lead. But, I mean, his car looks pretty clean and haven't really seen him in many accidents. And now he's back up there towards the front again. So, you know, you've raced with some guys in the race for a long time. They go away, and then you come back, and you kind of forget how they race. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out throughout the race. Yeah, absolutely. Just looking here, he's probably going to hook up with uh, uh, Eric Barlow, I would assume, uh, as we go green and really, really try to stay on that bottom line. All these guys in the bottom line are going to try to stay there. We see one car trying to dip down right in front of Tony Romack, which is going to be very difficult. Brandon Holder does stay down there. As long as he can hold it, he should be fine. But going into turn one and two, they are too wide, and they are getting it. Yeah, that's Todd Seaburn up the front. He was in an accident earlier, so it's very good to see him back and recovered towards the front, but he doesn't have a fast repair anymore. Then we also have Cole Haas up trying to get it into the lead right now from the outside lane with push with help from uh, Mark Mann there. And the 32 kind of is a little bit too far back for them to get help, and it's going to show there. There's There goes all their momentum in the inside and once again gets that going. And I tell you, a guy that's going to be uh, it looks sneaky right now is the number ten of Jonathan Cross in the outside line. You know, he started uh, pretty far back there, but he is making up some ground. You know, uh, riding with Eric Barlow right now with them go uh, going to number ten car across, and then he is going to take that uh, that number ten car right up there. He's going to be fourth in line on the outside line, which is a great place to be. Um, and he's sucking up to that number thirty-two uh, pretty pretty quick, and that that outside line is going to make a good run. Yeah, they got a good run. looks like the 32 kind of checked up, and that's not really what you want to do. I guess maybe he thought he had too much of a run to get to the 04, but then he kind of checked up, and it kind of killed the run they had. 36 doing a good job. He slid up there, but the 51's going to have to let him back in, and that's the 51 of Pete Polini. We haven't talked much about him. He started further towards the back today, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bright, you know, bright green on that race car. Not a hard car to miss, but we just haven't seen him towards the front yet. Right, and then you see Daniel Smallwood jump into that outside line again. Daniel Smallwood, a guy that uh, you, you look at and you're going to say, wow, he, he's making some really risky moves. But, uh, you know, that's a guy that can really control his car. Um, you know, he knows what he's getting into. He's trying to push that outside line again. He is going to play the odds. And if he's only got two cars in front of him, though, he just got hung out too dry going into three and four, which is unfortunate. But the 32 cars should come up and help him out. He wants to stay up there to keep his nose clean. Uh, has a little bit of rear damage, but you know that's going to be uh, Ira Kolhas that takes over the lead with Todd Seaver behind him, and that uh, the car right behind the 51. Uh, 
Piccolini suck right up the small one. Wouldn't be shocked to see those two make a huge run up to the front. Yeah, Smallwood has just been fast all day long. I mean, he's been up there towards the front. Same thing with Koloss. We haven't said much about him. He hasn't taken the lead, but he's been up in this lead pack and kept himself out of trouble. So he's done a really good job as we see Smallwood, that two-car tandem of Pelini and Smallwood, going to take towards the front. But Smallwood not going to be able to clear Koloss going into turn number three, and they're going to stay side by side. Yeah, they're going to need a third or fourth car to come up there with them. You got Matt and, uh, Newborn sitting back there in the 32 car. You know, Eric uh, Barlow sitting in the 14. He's going to stay on the bottom line. He knows how to play the game. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked to see somebody like Brandon Massey. He looks like he's sucking up out on the outside line with the 32 car to get a good run there. But they're going to have to to get a two, three, uh, four more cars up there to really get a push on that outside line. Looks like they're getting it. Looks, uh, again, like they're trying to figure out who's who where, and where they're going to be on the track. Bump drafting being huge and not knowing who that guy in front of you is or behind you can be difficult, but um, he's going to get that run and, oh, he gets that push. Oh, my goodness, and it's going to take out the front of the field. As Amos Smallwood took the lead, it just absolutely got some guys loose down on that apron. Again, 200 miles an hour at Daytona. Oh, yeah, and super unfortunate there, too. The four was literally going through the grass super slow and got ca caught up in that as well. Just unfortunate. I was going to say before that it kind of broken out. We saw Massey get back up there again, and then unfortunately he started having connection issues again. And I was going to say he might end up getting dropped to the back, but obviously with the accident happening now, like it's pretty set in stone at this point that he's going to be in the back. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the 51 car really got a good run, pushed Smallwood into the corner. And uh, when he did that, he got a little bit low. Now, I'm not sure if he made any contact with the 29 car of uh, Ira Kohlhaas, but uh, if he did, it was Netco. But, man, he got really close. Ira got down, just clipped that line, and then from there it was just all-out chaos. Uh, you know, you got the 04 sitting right behind him, uh, who's running that 04 car. You might have to help me out with that one, but looks like uh, Mark Mann. Th those guys, again, just know where to go. Yeah, I mean, super unfortunate. And then we got guys like Rick Seabrands that we haven't seen towards the front. He was going to avoid it, put himself in a good position. He got involved. And, and even if there was kind of a second accident that broke out a little bit behind those guys, just trying to avoid it and slow down for it. It's just how treacherous Daytona and these plate races are. Yeah, just really tough altogether. Uh, but, uh, you know, still got some guys up there that, that have fast repairs that haven't used them yet. Um, you know, 29 cars on the lead lap still. So, again, just going to be interesting to see how they play it out from here. Fortunately, we're almost a quarter into the race. I mean, we we're about at lap 50 at this point, but the unfortunate part is there's been so many accidents so far in this first quarter and it's it's got to calm down eventually right that's what i've got to be thinking because there have been a couple accidents now some guys have kind of gotten damaged it's it's got to calm down at some point with these guys it's it's super early so I, I i believe that now we've hopefully we've gotten it out of the way at this point and we can get some green flag runs going here yeah we're uh you know again Unfortunate, we've got a couple of guys still dealing with some uh, connection issues, but, uh, you know, we're only a quarter into the race here. So, you know, we only have three more of these 50 lap stints to go, uh, but at this pace, there might not be many cars on the lead lap. So you know, plan it safe, plan it smart. Some guys are still saving their fast repair, haven't used it yet. Um, it's just going to be uh, a, a, a time thing biggest thing about this race is being patient being calm working with the guy in front of you if you don't need to bump draft don't bump draft there's no need for it at this point in the race you don't have to be first right now you can be in the back of the pack like i said we're probably going to see somebody that was in the back of the pack early in the race with a completely clean car that's going to come up and win this thing and that's that's the strategy strategy you're trying to play here it's not really tires it's not 
your fast repair, who you're working with, is just keeping your vendors clean in Daytona and the field of cars that you just had not driven in. So I uh, would not be surprised to see somebody come out of the blue at the end of this race. I mean, absolutely. And at the end of the day, the thing that is going to ruin some strategies and help strategies is a caution. And you don't want that to, you know, you don't want to be a part of that caution. And again, you know, teammates have played a big factor in this. We've already seen early on in the day. We, you know, we had the loose low nut guys get up there. We had the 556 and his teammates kind of get up there and try and run. But it's going to be very interesting to see if those teammates and friendships can last all the way to the end of the race. You have to make sure that everybody in your group makes it to the end there if you want that, you know, that whole entire plan to work out. Absolutely. And, you know, Ira Coles has a, a good group of guys running with him, you know, guy that's been on iRacing for a year and a half, um, you know, been around racing, you know, pretty much his whole life. Uh, buddies with Randy Sellers and, you know, lives there in Tennessee, just, you know, been around racing his whole life, trying to just make it through. But, uh, you know, gets caught up into something that he can't, can't avoid. And, um, you know, again, some it's, it's, you know, the guys are making friends and guys are making enemies really quick, but pace car is going to pull off here and I'll let you take it to green. All right, green flag is back out. Daniel Smallwood is going to lead us down. The outside of him is going to be the 26 of Michael Crouch. Going to lean on him early here. Going to try and side draft him going into turn number one. And he has no help. <laughs> Gets completely abandoned on the top side. Everyone down to the bottom behind Daniel Smallwood. The next car that is in line on the top. Well, now is going to be, I believe that looks like the 18. No, the 10. No, that's the 18. That's the 10 of Brandon, or 18 of Brandon Holder. Going to jump over the 26, the 87 following suit behind them. So, again, some new guys we haven't seen up there all day getting yeah, up there now. Exactly what we were talking about. You got Justin Michael up there. We hadn't talked about him all day, but Justin Michael is a guy that's going to come out of nowhere again. A guy that's got some, uh, he's got some time behind the wheel. And you're going to see that three right there just break away. Smallwood has nothing that he can do there. They are staying together and then they leave. Uh, the 87 out to dry. Now he's going to pull down in front of Smallwood. Going to hopefully not touch going in the corner here. They do and spin the 10 car. Smallwood gets out of it. Wow, he really could have gotten into it pretty bad there. Not going to take out as many cars, but the 87 car, very unlucky right there. Yeah, more of the incident happened towards the back, and now it's really unfortunate for the loose Lud Knight guys because it looks like Ronald Klein was in that one again. So another incident for the 76, just nowhere to go. That was really unfortunate. And I think there might be a little bit of tensions now between those guys that had just gotten involved in that because I'm really not sure how much they're going to feel about, you know, the 26 being right on their door and causing that going into one. Yeah, and just uh, looking at that in slow-mo, you know, really not our judgment to say anything, but it looks uh, – it looks – like the 18 car kind of holds his line and then just gets pinched down just slightly by the 26 car, Michael Crouch. And uh, it does not take much again, getting that close to another car. Uh, they're, they're running 194 miles an hour, just extremely difficult uh, for, for you to hold that line and, and not get in an accident, not get involved. Yeah, I mean, that's just super unfortunate because it's just it's give and take at these races. You know, it, it's it's like that every weekend, but at any given track, but especially at a place like this, when give and take means a lot when you can affect 30 other people's race with one incident. And, you know, that's going to be a big moment now is, you know, to try and calm yourselves down after that. And now you kind of know how people are going to defend. And that's just how it's going to be on, you know, for later on in the race as well. But um tough break for those guys they had just they waited they felt like they played their cards right to go up towards the front and then they get caught up in an incident that started up towards the front so it's just very unfortunate for those guys that had gotten up there yeah so we're we're right at an hour into this race and we have made it just over 52 laps which you know that's a lot you know these guys you think about if we if we're at this pace 
think of just how long uh, these guys are going to be in their seats, the toll it's going to take on them, not only mentally, but physically. Uh, you know, if you haven't sat in a, in a sim rig before and run 100 laps around Daytona, you know, try 200. These guys are doing here. It, it is draining. You will start to sweat. You will, you will start to get cotton mouth, all kinds of different stuff, white knuckles. It is it's just like being in the real thing, uh, you know, as a as a guy that's driven before uh, in a couple of different asphalt series uh, years ago. The, the only difference between eye racing and being in a real car uh, is one, I don't have to fix it if I break it, uh, which is always great. But, you know, you just lose a little bit of sensitivity and a little bit of depth perception. Obviously, things like the wind coming at you the heat from the engine. But don't let that fool you. These guys, will, they will break a sweat, get white knuckled as anything else, uh, just racing these sim racing uh, rigs that they have. And in 200 laps, just taking a toll on their body. I mean, absolutely. I mean, we speak from experience, too. I mean, you know, we've had these long races, you know, in the, the LSRL. I mean, a, a race that I think of that, you know, that I was pretty exhausted after was uh, the Dover Xfinity race, a, a tra or, you know, a track like that where you're just on the wheel constantly. And even these plate races, too, it takes a lot out of you sometimes. And to think that they're doing it for a full, you know, 500 mile length here for Daytona is just it's mind boggling for me. Absolutely. And it's it's a deal where uh, that not only that mind and your body, you just get in a, a deal where. We're going to be sitting here, you know, almost a three and a half, maybe a four hour race, uh, 200 miles an hour around Daytona. Again, if you, you, you watch these cars at full speed, once they get back to full speed, uh, we'll try to get back to a camera view from a far chase or a rear chase on one of these cars and watching them at full speed and seeing how they're dancing around. And these drivers are just sawing on that wheel back and forth. You really have to, to tip your cap to these guys to hold in there and do what they're doing as long as they're going. I mean, 100%. And then also you got to think there's in just trying to keep themselves calm too. And then especially when you're in a, you know, if you're a guy like, you know, Mark Mann, you know, you're a single car guy kind of coming out here and racing. You don't have to think about it as much when you have teammates, you know, it, being in a team setting, there could be a lot of frustration that builds up you know, amongst your chat with, you know, the guys you're racing with and you all get very frustrated and kind of, you know, you balance off that feelings with each other. And then, you know, it, it could be very hard to get rid of that, that emotion sometimes. Totally agree with you. Uh, you know, just, uh, it, it is, it is what it is, is what I say a lot of the time. And, you know, it, it it's part of the deal. You got the 26 car that was involved in that came out clean. Now he's going to come out, uh, you know, smelling like a rose here, uh, sitting, sitting on the pole. We're going to have uh, Brandon Massey second, Dan Witt, who a guy we haven't talked about, um, but the pace car is going to roll off and they're going to hit the loud pedal, man. And I'm going to tell you what, that outside line, Brandon Massey got a good run, but now he's starting to fall back just a little bit. Michael Crouch is going to take him through the tri -oval. He's got the 91 of Dan DeWitt pushing him. That outside line, Pete Polini, he's right there. It looks like Pete's going to drop down low. Uh, they're going to leave Brandon Massey hung out too dry. And it looks like a 29 car, I believe, of Ira Colas is going to have to go up there and get him if they want to make any run at all. Yeah, it's been a tough night for Massey. He has two teammates, but he just hasn't really gotten things going. If he has some guy behind him, they kind of drop out. Polini probably could have stayed with him and got a run there through one and two, but he decided to drop back down to the bottom, which kind of interested me on, you know, how his mindset, he's probably just trying to ride around here. But, you know, Massey's had a lot of issues. He's had guys abandon him, you know, take him three wide. You know, there's been a couple wrecks he's had to avoid. And then on top of that, he had the connection issues earlier that it had him to drop to the back. But here he is back up towards the front, fighting through adversity. Yep, and you're going to see again those two guys that we talked about earlier. You know, one to watch out for, Dustin Covington in the 48 car and Mitchell Reeves right behind him, two of those loose lug nut guys, Eric Borelli right behind them. You know, uh, Mitchell's got a lot of damage, but 
I tell you what, Dustin looks pretty clean. Um, another car you're going to see right there, that 37 right back up in the mix of Daniel Smallwood. Again, you're going to see him and it's going to look like, man, he's making some risky moves. But at the same time, as Massey starts blinking out again, uh, you know, he is not going to be afraid to jump out of line, make it three wide, do what he's got to do to get up to that front and get out of the way. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Massey, at least he's going to show his loyalty to the top side. They, you know, got a good run. That was what the outside lane kind of needed to get him up front. And he kind of waited to see if he can get Kohlhaas clear. And it just never materialized. And then obviously you saw the blinking that happened. But uh, Crouch and Wit on the bottom hanging strong right now. And like I said, we haven't talked much about Wit as they come up on the lap car of the 32. Going to try and weave by him. 32 up in the wall, but I think everyone should get around him. That's Matt Newborn going a lap down. But a very interesting. Now the bottom is starting to kind of pull away a little bit. Yeah, they're they're starting to kind of get in line. It looks like they know where they're going to work. You know, Smallwood running back there in six, the five car. Uh, what looks like the five that may be an overlay. Justin Rideout, he's going to be up there. Oh, man. The, the car on the inside, I don't know who that was on the bottom. That was Pipolini got a little loose there. You know, just, again, got to figure out how much is too much. He's going to come up and bump draft 26 of Michael Crouch at the same time. Wow. Daniel Witt dropping down. It looks like Daniel Witt is right there. I mean, they are really getting it. That was Michael Crouch dropping down in front of Dan Witt. Coming up on the slow car here, it's going to be very difficult for them to pass. I mean, really difficult. That 36 car really causing some issues. And yeah, that was really going to hurt some guys. Yeah, that was Todd Sieber, and I'm not entirely sure. A lot of the guys did a good job moving out of the way. Not really sure if he knew the pack was coming up or if he was just frustrated or what, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll see if. You know, maybe the tower didn't like that. We'll kind of figure it out. Maybe they'll issue a warning. Not really sure what happened there. But uh, I was going to say good move for Dan because he had jumped out to the top to make that work to get to the front. Oh, and he's, he's sideways. He's around. Oh, and he just absolutely gets obliterated by Mark Brown as he comes down the track. Again, Mark Brown sitting there just minding his business. But Mark in the 73 car, just kind of just kind of riding. Jonathan Cross gets tied up into that. Tony Romack gets tied up into that. Uh, you know, a couple of guys that had some clean cars. Very unfortunate there. Yeah, taking a look, that was really kind of started going into three. Witt had kind of gotten pinched by Cole Haas a little bit, and then it, he tagged the apron from it, and it got him loose, and he just was never able to recover it. And Wow, bad, bad luck for Smallwood just to be where he was and everyone else trying to avoid it. And then we saw Covington get a piece of the 91 later on. You have the 73 plowing in. And that took uh, Dan Witt up in the air for a little bit. It's a tough break. I mean, these guys are trying their hardest, and it's very hard to keep these things straight and just unfortunate every single time when an accident occurs like this. Yeah, it really is. And, and Dan did his best to try to hold on to that thing there. Uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things we say it over and over. At 200 miles an hour, very hard to control a car that's out of control. you got to be able to be smart and stay off of that line. You know, you, you can't bump draft in the corner here. One thing we can see some cars, we have seen some cars too. It's just insanely difficult to hold on to your wheel at 200 miles an hour, regardless of how much force feedback you have as these cars come down pit road. Uh, you know, it, it's just difficult to hold on to that thing in the corner. So hopefully these, these, these guys can figure out uh, again, here early in the race, how to hold on to that wheel, when to bump draft, when not to bump draft. Yeah, that was just super unfortunate for those guys. And they got it, you know, they, they just been really aggressive the whole race. A lot of these guys, these are fast repairs. And I was going to say, uh, Dan Witt looking like a really good beneficiary of, you know, being smart. He kind of rode around. He got that damage from that wreck and he had a fast repair left. So he's back in it. Clean race car. Yeah, absolutely. Just going through a, a replay here. It looks like the, the 36 
you know, kind of entering pit road and I'm not sure if he got into it looks like he got into the 87 car going into pit lane i mean just some odd odd mistakes going on here which you just um not not very indicative of high and uh high end racing here uh yeah getting uh getting in an accident out on that track is one thing but man coming down bit road and getting spun out uh, the 87 is not really happy right now yeah i would say so that's very frustrating to to even get hit in you know a situation where you're not on the racetrack i mean but I mean, it happens too. I mean, even if you got to think pit road at a super speedway, multiple guys, 40 guys trying to, you know, parallel park into these boxes and it's, it's still at 55 miles per hour. I mean, I still think, you know, I go on the highway and go 55 miles per hour. That still feels fast and, you know, tough to make decisions even then too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just a lot of moving parts. Again, we talked about it earlier on in the race, getting on and off pit road is going to be difficult. Even going down pit road is difficult. So, yeah, you know, just so many variables that go on here with these races. But, you know, that puts Brandon Massey up front. Hopefully his connection can hold out. Uh, Iron Kohlhaas in second, Daniel Smallwood in third, Tyler McWerther. Haven't talked about him all day. Again, another guy that's just going to come out of nowhere. We're going to see how that's going to work out for him. Eric Morelli up in uh, fifth place. Michael Jean sitting there in sixth. Uh, Mitchell Reeves in seventh. Mitchell Reeves again. Michael Jeans know each other from previous races. Hopefully they can work together. Brandon Holder in eighth. Mark Brown in ninth. He's been up there. Jonathan Cross in tenth. Uh, that 10 car one again, I would watch out for. One of the fastest guys on the pole there, Mark Mann, sitting in 11th. And Dan Witt, who was just in that accident, unfortunately, in 12th. You know, Anthony English sitting in 13th. These, all of these guys, some of them we have talked about, some of them we have not talked about. Again, Who's going to be able to keep their fenders clean for 200 laps? Uh, it, it, that is what's that's what this race is going to come down to. Yeah, and this restart's really going to set the tone for that too as well. I mean, they got. I mean, there's still a lot of guys left. Some guys a lot down from repairs and all that, and you know, a lot of guys that can't keep up with the draft. But if it if it stays as crazy as it's been, then think we'll be all right you know some of these guys that are in the back will be all right but the pace car is going to go ahead and pull down restarts on the leader and there goes massey kohas looked to have kind of an advantage there almost seemed like he had him but kind of got drilled there in the start by the 65 uh and then he tried to cut down on smallwood and that gap closed up quickly with the draft and smallwood gonna move into second and the top three pulled away from these first uh this you know lead pack of cars this is very interesting to see how much of a run you got the o2 coming back that's one of the loose lug nut guys that's yeah, my this is uh, gonna be interesting when you get a when you get a group that breaks away like that and, and, and then they start to make a run the number five car jumps up eric really jumps down they start to three wide going into three uh those guys start to make a run on those three that broke away early that's uh that's scary it's nice to break away early and see that little bit of distance but man when you see those guys in the rearview mirror you know they're coming and they are going to come at you like a freight train so very very interesting to see what happens uh you know we got one car here uh, with michael crouch got stuck outside on the 26 car now looks like he's going to get a little bit of help from ed ballard one they can stay in the high line they may be okay if they can get some help with five car really making some aggressive moves here as he drops down low behind looks like mitchell reeves yeah i was gonna say reeves finally found his way back up to the front uh i haven't seen the loose low night guys up here in a while uh ever since they had that dominance there for the first 20 laps or so but Massey continuing to lead smallwood doing a great job keeping himself up here in second then we have cole Haas, who's been up here all day in third that is Fowler going to go up to the top here. Or no, that's sorry, Scotty Shed in the five. Yeah, Scotty Shed's been Shed pretty is good. Two, he's two laps down, and that's uh, that's going to be very interesting there that he is up there with that lead back running two laps down with the aggressive moves that he's making. So um, this is going to be very interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, we haven't seen Shed much. He's been up towards the front, but he got caught up in a couple accidents, so he had to, you know, sit down there and get repairs. Obviously, it's why he's two laps down, I would assume. Uh, but it's kind of worked out. He's looking pretty fast. 
and that's that's going to be an immediate removal from the race with him racing that fast i believe i'm not sure uh, but uh, just just unfortunate you, you don't want to get these other guys like smallwood and massey caught up in an accident with a car two laps down uh, just kind of a racing etiquette deal there but you know now we're back to racing all the the top cars kind of sucking up together. Michael Crouch sucking up at Michael Reeves or Mitchell Reeves. I'm sorry. Um, Ed Fowler behind them. Uh, it, those cars are going to kind of sit in line. And I think from here, we're going to see hopefully these guys kind of stick in that bottom lane, uh, work together, and just make some clean laps. That's what they're looking to do. Take some time off of the board right now. Yeah, and that was uh, almost kind of jinxed in there because I believe, yeah, we'll I think that's probably why Tower had removed him there, or maybe some other prior incidents, but unfortunate for the five of Scotty Shedd. And it looks like we're finally starting to get calmed down. Massey's got control of this thing. Small is kind of keeping in, and everyone's kind of just riding on the bottom right now, biting their time here on lap 68 of 200. Absolutely. I mean, it's a big, big drop back. Uh, lap car of Todd Sieben, but then you have uh, Brandon Holder, uh, the, the tail end of this pack, trying to see what he can do on that outside line, which is there's there's nothing nothing there for him. But um, some of these cars in that second pack, you're, you're going to start to see them come up. Michael Jeans looks like he's hooked up with Lance Thompson back there in the 121. Those are two guys that can work together. Uh, the 76, Ronald Klein behind him. Uh, Dustin Covington uh, again behind him. Now, Ronald Klein is a lap down, but he is going to help his partners as much as he can. So don't be surprised if that second group catches up. Don't be surprised if they stay where they're at. Yeah, and the good thing for Ronald Klein as well is as long as he can stay where he is, he's going to have to pass the 36 but and the 30 that just went a lap down of Reed Christensen. But if Ronald is able to get back uh, in front of the two guys that are a lap down, a caution comes out, then he gets the free pass. Absolutely. Uh, you got Todd Seaburn uh, right there as well. They're all kind of well, now you're now you're starting to see some guys. Now you got uh, Ronald Klein. Looks like uh, Ronald Klein and Michael Jeans, guys that know each other, uh, raced against each other. Klein's going to go to the outside. Uh, forget helping him. He's just going to go to the outside. Looks like uh, Dustin Covington's going to come right behind him, his partner in crime, and try to, to take him uh, take him up to that front. They're going to try and catch that 36 car, hopefully catch the front of the pack, but it's going to be very difficult to do. Looks like the 39 car kind of dropping back. Not sure if he's having some some issues other than you know being a lap down uh, or two laps down. He may have some blinking issues, but Massey, uh, wow, Massey is going to have to drop to the back for his blinking issues. Uh, that's going to be big throughout this race. So how is he going to handle that? Uh, will his connection get better? Uh, and can he get back up front? His car looks fairly clean, so hopefully he can get that thing settled down. Yeah, I'm kind of sensing that the nerves of this lead pack is finally kind of calmed down. It, it may have taken 72 laps, but they finally kind of realized that they've got to stop what they've been doing up front so they can make sure they have a chance. And now I think this is kind of this typical Daytona. They're going to ride the train and just make sure they'll take care of each other and and make sure everyone gets to the end here. So you've got three wide between Klein and uh, Massey here, but... You know, Matt, you know, Klein's going to be making some moves right now to make sure that he's in that spot to get the free pass for sure. Again, a driver that has been around a long time, has raced a lot of races. Looking at Ronald Klein's car, he has been in some accidents. His car is completely squeaky clean. He saved that fast repair as long as he could. Great, great strategy by him. It looks like he's going to hook up with Eric uh, Barlow. Again, a guy that's been caught up in wrecks. Absolutely not one scratch on that car because he was able to save his fast repair. So 
even though Ronald Klein's a lap down, he is going to be fast and help these guys to the front. And nobody uh, that has raced with Ronald is going to be scared to run around him because they know he's going to help push him to the front. Oh, yeah, so far just super clean. As long as you've known a guy for so long, you just trust in what they're going to do and you kind of know them kind of the in and outs, but, you know, they'll, they'll surprise you a lot as well. And we're going to start to get a challenge up for the lead again. That's going to be the 26 of Michael Crouch with help from Bar Isle there. And, I mean, they got the outside going again, so it's good to see them try and get ahead of Smallwood. Maybe going to clear him here. They're going to try to help out his buddy that helped him get up there, but... I think he had a chance. He just waited too long there. Yeah, it looks like he uh, kind of hung hung Ronald out the dry, unfortunately. But now he comes back up and uh, helps helps Eric out. Eric's going to get on his bumper. Hopefully he can settle that car down and give him a little bump. Uh, Ronald climbed behind him. It looks like the 36 car dropping right underneath them. So a lot of oh, the 36 car gets on the apron. Hopefully he can hold on to that. Ronald Klein backs out of it smartly. Mitchell Reeves right behind him. You know, again, really, really hard to see with Todd Sebring right there. Just a great save, but it goes to show you how quick that car can get loose. Yeah, and Sebring's kind of sensing this as well, because remember, he is a lap down, so he is in turn battling the 76. So he has to make sure that if a caution is to occur, he has to be ahead of Ronald. And though Ronald checked up, that is the guy he's trying to beat. It kind of did help out the 36 by saving that car. Yeah, and you'll see Ronald coming on the outside now, and he's got Mitchell Reeves. He's got Covington right behind him. Covington will give him a bump if he can, not going into the corner. But, uh, you know, he, he smartly backed out. He knows he doesn't have that fast repair in his pocket now. So now he's got to make it to the end of this race. You know, he's got to make it another 125 laps around Daytona without, uh, without spinning out, without touching the wall. And here he comes with Covington. I would not be surprised to see Mitchell Reeves jump out, although Mitchell Reeves stays right where he is. It looks like Covington and Mitchell Reeves are going to pass him. Pretty clean going into one and two as they head down the back stretch, staying on the outside. As Eric Barlow, everybody else has dropped to the middle. Daniel Smallwood still out front. And there you go, going three wide. Ronald Klein's going to take it three wide going into three. First lap down car, clean as a whistle. Is he going to be able to clear? It doesn't look like it, but, man, he is hugging that wall. These guys are battling it out big time up front. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that the O2 had not kind of jumped up there with his teammate. I, I would assume that Reeves would have went up there, but maybe not. I was thinking that he would have jumped up to be the third car. Maybe they're understanding Ronald's situation a little bit to try and get him back on the lead lap. But uh, that just never materialized. I just don't know if he's more content with riding around, but obviously uh, Covington is trying to help Ronald as much as he can by getting him ahead of that 36. So if that caution does occur, or maybe just even try and push him ahead of the pack so he can unlap himself that way. Yeah, Massey jumps right out in front of Ronald. You know, Covington is sitting there in the fifth place. Uh, you know, he is pushing that lap down car because he knows that lap down car is fast. Uh, Ronald Klein gets that that lucky dog, and they may all pit at the same time, come back out. But, you know, it looks like Massey is going to make the move here and get right in front of Daniel Smallwood. Will he drop down or will he stay with the guys at the bottom? He is going to drop down. I mean, no love for the one that got you there. So we're going to see Ronald Klein and Covington there on that outside line. And it looks like Mark Brown will be the guy to try to help him out if they can. Yeah, and I think that was just a result of earlier because, remember, Massey was on a restart earlier where those three lug loose lug nights guys were all hooked up with each other, and he had Ronald behind him. He went to the outside, and Ronald didn't go with him. So he, I guess he was kind of like, you know what? I think I'm going to get him back for that one. And it showed there because he dropped straight to the bottom in front of Smallwood once he got clear. Absolutely, and they're, and they're still a little bit dicey up front, a lot of good drivers. I'm going to make one assessment right now. Running back in 15th, the car 18 of Brandon Holder. If you look at that car, he is keeping a safe distance in front of him and the car in front of him. He's, he's, he sees he's gaining ground and he backs off. He's going to keep that car clean. It looks like his, his idea, keep my car clean as long as possible, make a run at the end. I would not be surprised to see, again, somebody from the back 
like Brandon Holder come up through this field within 50 laps to go and run away from the pack with a clean car. I mean, 100%. And then we look at guys that are also around that area, like the 33, and then we have Michael Jeans in there as well. Those are all guys that I would expect to to you know, help themselves here towards the end of the race, keep themselves calm, keep them out of trouble. I think they understand the situation a lot more than some of those guys that had charged to the front early. So I think they're doing a good job. The thing that they got to make sure, though, is once it starts to get you know late in this race and you know go time, they have to make sure they're close enough to this lead pack that they can make a run out at the end, even with green flag stops as well. Absolutely. And while all that's going on, you see Ronald Klein and Covington drop down on the inside and they uh, leave the 26 of Michael Crouch hanging outside with Mark Brown again. Brandon Massey and Daniel Smallwood still bumper to bumper. Daniel Smallwood, um, another one, had some damage early, saved that fast repair along with Massey. You know, two guys that have got a lot of wheel time. That 37 car is always going to be fast. Uh, Massey's always going to be fast. Just got to hope his connection holds up. Ira uh, Kolhas right there in third is doing great as well. So it looked like we got a good run going on here with these guys. Uh, we're going to take a, a short break to a commercial. We'll come back, update you on any lead changes. Uh, hopefully no accidents, but we want to thank, uh, thank LSRL again, the butt kicker uh, and Wilder Graphics for putting this on. We'll see you in just a second. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Butt kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Get yours today at www.thebuttkicker.com and be sure to use promo code LSRL for 20% off. And as we come back, as soon as we come back, we have a caution. It takes out a good bit of the field. We're going to have to see who was trying to keep their car clean and got caught up into that, uh, that deal. But uh, unfortunately, having a lot of laps going on there, long stretch of laps going on. It looked like everybody was clean and then out of nowhere with this, uh, this accident, which is uh, out. Yeah, and taking a look at it, that was very unfortunate. The 36, it kind of just gotten loose, which was unfortunate. I guess he was, you know, being aggressive. He, that was a guy he was trying to beat in front of him, Ronald Klein, and then he just slid down in front of the pack. Some of these guys know where to go. You know, Covington got involved. Two loose lug nut guys got involved, and those were the two that were on the lead lap. Just so many guys that were kind of riding as well that still got involved just because, you know, how fast things happen here. It's just really unfortunate to see the 33 plowing in there at the end. It's just... Super unfortunate. Yeah, and it just looks like, uh, you know, riding, I believe, with, uh, you know, Dustin Covington, if you want to roll into Dustin Covington's cockpit and go back uh, right there at that lap 84, you'll see that it looks like that 36 just got arrow loose of some sort. Um, 
not, you know, nothing around him. Uh, not quite sure what happened, if he pulled his wheel down uh, a little too quick or, or what, but I mean, that number 48 car is right behind him and he had a front row seat for that thing going into turn one. And uh, you have to believe that scared him a, a good bit. And uh, unfortunately he was caught up in that as, as well. Not, uh, not awful until Michael Jeans gets into him, but we'll, we'll just have to see how much the uh, damage is. It's, you, know, you just see that get loose and, oh man, it looked like he was going to make it through and then just could not squeak that thing through. You see Eric Barlow get through there spinning around as well. So just unfortunate for some of these guys running up front. Yeah, and that's got to be super frustrating for those loose slow night guys too because they were up there earlier. They played their strategy out. They finally, you know, they got separated, fell to the back, you know, had some issues, finally got themselves back up front, and then, you know, get back in an accident. But the good news of that happening, though, is that their teammate that they were trying to help out, Ronald Klein, back on the lead lap. Absolutely. We're going to see, uh, hopefully, um, you know, if he was able to keep his car clean, he'll be okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, the bad part about that and, and the unfortunate part was the 26 car uh, or the 36 car, I believe it was, that was in that uh, accident, was a lap down uh, up there running with those uh, with those guys. And that's what we talk about again. You know, it's difficult. You know, you, you're fast and you want to drive with them. Uh, but you don't make a whole lot of friends when you make a mistake like that. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, he'll get, he'll go to the back, but the, the worst part of the whole deal is some of these faster drivers that may have used that fast repair. The only one they had don't have it anymore. So we're just going to have to see who's clean. Uh, but Daniel Smallwood uh, still looking pretty good right now. Um, looks like the number eight car of Justin Rideout. One guy we haven't talked about. He's going to be coming uh, on the pole here. He's sitting on the pole, uh, coming to green. You know, maybe a guy, again, that's just been sitting back and, and waiting. Yeah, that's really good yeah. for uh, for Justin as well. I mean, yeah, like I said, haven't been up there all day, and now he's, you know, found himself up there. Getting ready to go green here shortly, but you know the thing that sucks for Ronald as well is that his teammates worked really hard to get him back on the lead lap. They did, but the cost was they got involved in the the accident that got him back on the lead lap. So even though he's back on the lead lap, now his you know his teammates and his friends that have helped him get up there aren't gonna be there. Yeah, and then the 36 car there, you know, just reporting over the radio, he has a 36-minute repair. So uh, that's going to be the end of his race. Um, so unfortunately, being a lap down and lights out on the pace car, he was up there running with that top group and ends up getting uh, getting into it with a lot of these other guys. But, you know, I'm going to tell you what, um, I, I'm not sure exactly – how everything is shaking out right now. But if you look at how this thing's going to come to green, uh, look at who I mentioned was going to be up there with Brandon Holder in the 18 car was running 15th a little while ago, just staying back out of the mess. He is going to be sitting really pretty with Justin right out. So uh, again, both cars clean. Let's see how they can get to the end of this race, hopefully staying out front and staying clean. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those I called it moments. I mean, you said it yourself. He's up there now and leading the race. Pace car pulls down. And we are back under green here. Good launch by the top lane. Smallwood all over right out there. And it might work out. The top side is a lot more form than we've seen in previous restarts. Yeah, the one thing we have to watch out now is you. Yeah, we do have new cars up front. They are clean, but... They haven't been up front all day. Smallwood's been up front all day. Massey's been up front all day. Eric Barlow's been up front all day. How are these cars going to work together? How do they drive around each other? Will they be able to hang? Will they get shifted to the back? As you're going to see, when it looks like uh, Rideout's going to drop to the bottom, and I guarantee you Smallwood is going to stay there and let Massey suck right up to the bumper of him and try to ride this thing out. But 
how are these guys going to drive around each other here for the next five or 10 laps? That's going to be interesting. Yeah, and you got to point out, as we see the 65, once again, going through some connection issues of the blink there. I mean, that that restart was the movement of the Justins. Justin right out in the lead, and then obviously we have Justin Michael in the 87. We've seen a couple times out of frame, and we haven't talked about him, but you know here he is, looks pretty clean, a little bit of rear end damage, but for the most part, he's up there and contending now. Well, again, unfortunately, Justin was the one that got uh, spun out. <laughs> going on to pit road. So uh, not uh, not the happiest camper, but again, the rear end damage should not affect him too much. He will not have the top end speed that a lot of these guys have. As long as he can stay in the draft though, he should be okay. Uh, again, small wood, Massey, uh, and looks like uh, Ira. Th that, again, cars that have been up front all day, they should stick together, hope to pull away from these guys. I don't see him getting completely away, but. Uh, hopefully they stick together, stay clean, and get through uh, these, you know, last 110 laps we have here. Absolutely. So we got three cars that have been up front all day long, pushing themselves to the front. That's going co to consist of uh, Smallwood, Massey, and uh, Kolhoss there. I mean, this is very interesting. That was almost like these three have now known each other. And we said it before, these partnerships that you gain throughout the race, because Massey, you know, Kolhoss and Small had been up there all day, and then everyone else in the bottom had rode and finally gotten up there. So it's very interesting how those three partnered up here at the end and then starting to work against these new guys. Yeah, and you're going to see Massey and Smallwood up front again. Um, you know, Brandon Holder, we mentioned him. It looks as if uh, he is dropping to the back. Maybe strategy. He is definitely not trying to stay into the draft. So uh, you know, how is that going to work out for him? Don't know. Other guys that we have not talked about a ton, Dustin uh, Covington and, and Ronald Klein still sitting back there. Uh, Dustin's car looks absolutely beautiful as well as Ronald Klein. Um, I will tell you a couple of other cars that really stood out. If I can get back to him is Dan Witt. Dan Witt's car looking clean. A guy that has been up front all day, was involved in an accident, but has been up front. And then you have Mark Mann back there with another clean car, the guy that started on the pole. So, you know, just sitting there and riding. Again, we're, all, we're not even halfway into this race yet. These guys are playing the long run, which they should. Hopefully, this works out for them. It looks like a lot of guys getting loose up there. And Fowler drops below the yellow line. A couple of other guys just kind of shifting around. Michael Jean's getting a little bit loose there. Mitchell Reeves trying to get a hold of the car in front of him. I mean, just a lot of movement going on, but it looks like we're going to get settled down just a little bit. Yeah, and that was really smart by those guys, too. Remember Dan Witt, he, we did see him get involved in the accident earlier, already used his fast repair, but, I mean, he's kind of rode around now. He, he rode for a bit, went up there when he felt like it was calm. It wasn't calm. Another storm kind of brewed up and got him involved, and now he's waiting again going to bite his time, and I guarantee we'll see him back up there with around 20 to go. Absolutely. And, you know, he's he's sitting in a place in 19. Uh, the 20 cars on the lead lap, he knows he doesn't have a ton of pressure behind him. So why well, try to push it? So Dan Witt in that 90 car, 91 car, uh, you know, playing that long run, uh, along with Mark Mann. Again, I, I definitely think that uh, the 18 car of Brandon Holder is dropping back on purpose. Um, he's, he's doing it methodically, but, uh, you know, just trying to ride this thing out again, 90% of this thing is going to be, uh, mental for these guys and how they attack this track and how they're attacking each other. So, you know, how much time can we get out of this race? If it, you're going to get 15 laps uh, of time in the, in this car around this track which might add up to the same amount of time that you're sitting in the seat for one caution. So, you know, they don't want to see another caution come out. They want to see this thing go green. Just who's working with who, who's going to push who and stay off of whose bumper so that we can have this thing clean from here to the end. Yeah. And the big thing too, with all these cautions that we haven't talked about, cause we haven't you know, had to experience yet. If it goes green for a long time, we have not had a green light stop once this race. And that is so huge because no one is on the rhythm of 
coming down pit road, ducking out of this huge pack of cars at 200 miles per hour, and then slowing to 55. It's, it's going to be very hard to get used to. Great point, and we mentioned it at the start of the race, how hard it is going to be to get on the pit road at 200 miles an hour and slow down to a pit road speed about to leave 65 miles an hour. Uh, very difficult for them to do, but you know, right now you're still seeing those those four out front. Uh, Brandon Massey, Dana Smallwood leading right now. Uh, Ira Kohas and Eric Carlisle. Uh, Justin right out and started on that pole on this restart is, is still hanging in in the fifth position. Uh, Jonathan Cross and Tony Carter talked about him earlier. Oh, we're going to see one car drop down low. It looks like Dana Smallwood is going to drop down low. Again, what looks to be an aggressive move. I, I guarantee you, very calculated by. Uh, that young driver, he knows exactly what he wants to do when he wants to do it, but really left Eric Barlow out hanging. And I think that 14 car is probably going to drop down if right out does not jump in front of him here. Yeah, and Barlow, and it kind of took him by surprise too, because Barlow had gotten really loose and it almost made some contact with the guys on the bottom and almost started up another incident. But I mean, we're, we're getting near the end here. We're finally about to hit the halfway mark here in a few laps. Very exciting. It's been a great race so far, and now that they've kind of calmed down, it's going to be the waiting game at this point. It's going to be like a it's going to be like a time bomb at this point. The laps are going to wind down, and eventually, it's all going to explode when everyone starts to go for it here at the end. Yeah, and again, who who was able to hold on to that fast repair? Looking through all of the top five cars right now, every single car looks clean. So all of these drivers have not only been able to play the long game themselves who to work with who not to work with uh, they, they knew when to take that fast repair and if they can keep this thing clean to, you know get through that initial they know they were going to do those initial attacks that happened during this race so they knew they were going to get caught up in it maybe two and they might have waited to the second even third caution that they were caught up in before they used that fast repair and now they're sitting in the top five so a lot of different strategies being played here, but those top five are clean. Let's see if they can kind of break away here from the pack behind them, which is what they would love to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then there's just guys that are up there that you think you kind of know what they're going to do all race, and they just haven't shown their hand. And a, a guy that I would look at for that is Michael Jeans. I've, uh, we've raced against Michael Jeans before, and I know that he he's a, you know a racer. He wants to get up there and race for the lead and challenge for it, but he hasn't shown that aggression that – that I know he has and that he he's going to use. And I, I know he's just saving it for the end. So it's going to be very interesting once some of these guys that have been holding back flip the switch and go up there. Absolutely. And you got the 26 car up there high and staying out of the way. Michael Crouch has been in some accidents. You know, that's going to be difficult for him to kind of keep pace. He's running right at that 170 mark. But, uh, he's if he can't keep that pace at 175, he's probably going to be asked to park it there because again, trying to keep these other guys. I just see Ronald Klein uh, go right by him, just trying to keep these other guys clean. Ronald Klein was a lap down out of the top 20. Now he's sitting there at uh, 13th with his teammates in front of him. So interesting to see if he can get back up front or if he's going to stay where he's at for the remainder of his 100 laps as we just now are hitting the halfway mark. Yeah, and that's a big thing, too, as well. I mean, we saw it earlier, and that it, it's a huge testament to, to those loose lug nut guys is if this strategy really does work out for them, though, because, you know, it's easy to do that early and get up with each other there towards the end. And I'm already seeing two of them are nose to tail. The only one that's, you know, the odd one out is, is Ronald Klein right now, but, you know, they're just kind of waiting. That's a huge testament and a huge, you know, thing if they're going to be able to last all the way to the end and execute this plan perfectly because so far it's worked out in their favor about it every turn there's been a few bumps in the road but they've been able to overcome them very well absolutely and just you know looking at some of these cars and great paint jobs that we have here just really really cool see Daniel Smallwood out front rocking that, that Dale Earnhardt vintage paint um, you know where such a legend of the sport uh, tragically passed away at this track but this guy representing that car uh, 
with, with I'm sure anybody would be proud of the way he's representing that car today. But cool to see that paint job out front uh, and, and running as well as he is, as long as he is, just dominant. Yeah, and I got to say, we were talking about that. We'll probably get a little replay up here shortly, but that was almost big. Barlisle and Cole Haas had gotten into each other, and that was a an unlikely mistake by those two that we haven't seen all race, but they had made some contact and shifted down towards the apron. I thought we were going to get another caution, but they did a good job of saving it there. So that was close to being another incident here in this race. It was very close. I, I couldn't see it from where, uh, where my camera angle was, but now I'm looking back at uh, 14th place and, and sitting there, Ronald Bryan up to 11th now because of that. So uh, Eric Barlow all the way back down to 18th. Um, not sure exactly uh, how bad his car is. Uh, Martin Mann has just hung out by himself in 17th, so he's gonna really struggle here. Uh, again, gonna be interesting to see what happens. Who can stay they can keep it going but man i'll tell you what some of these guys have just completely lost the draft and it's going to be very difficult for them to come back eric, eric barlow that's, you know, that's probably going to be the end of his day as far as being able to win this race so actually you kind of shifted the strategy i looked at it back at that incident though that was very interesting because where kohas had slid to the apron Barlisle had slid down to pit road and he decided to take advantage and slow down to pit speed and go ahead and take a green flag stop. So we'll be interested to see if he brings anybody down from that move. Another one that followed him was the eight of uh, Justin Whiteout. Another one did go down pit road, but it was to avoid an accident. So they had the black flags clear. That was the 04 Mark Mann. Uh, good to see that he didn't get involved in that, but obviously a, a very, very scary sight for our pole sitter there. Yeah, and again, the worst side you can see right now is you have Smallwood and Massey out front with a uh, enormous lead on the cars behind them. But I will tell you, when Justin and Michael and Dustin Covington, Michael Jeans and Mitchell Reeves get to him, they are going to jump to that outside, and it may be a freight train that sends those two guys to the back. Very interesting as we see Justin Michael come up. Is he going to stay there? Is he? It looks like he is going to stay, which is very shocking. Covington uh, or, or somebody like that with Mitchell Reeves where they jump out. Uh, man, I really would have popped out of that line and, and just run past those guys. So maybe they're teammates and we don't know it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a scary sight being that far ahead of this track and seeing a group come up. And now you'll see Daniel right out in the number eight car trying to get up there. Exactly what we're talking about. And maybe the reason that Justin Michael couldn't do what he wanted to do is because of how much damage he has on his car. Uh, obviously, his use is fast repair. Uh, but, you know, Michael Jean's behind him and still push him. Um, right out is definitely going to try it on the, on the outside. But can anybody come up there with him? Will anybody help him out? That has yet to be seen. I don't know of any of his teammates that are close to him, but he's still getting an enormous side draft off of Ronald Klein and just making a run by himself. And he is pushing through fourth, through third, all the way up into second place. And he, I'm sorry, he is a lap down because he did make that pit stop, but still clean car, making a great run. Very interesting. How are these leaders gonna like that lap down car running up there with him? He is making a run on his own and uh, those fresh tires may be able to push him out, him out in front of this back for quite some time. Yeah, I was going to say this strategy really worked out because that was smart. The way he was coming up the field, that told me he has fresh tires. And I would not have thought to take fresh tires under that green flag stop, but this could work out because if he's able to catch a caution at the right spot now, now that he's not a lap down, he can loop around and then if the people and all the people in front of him pit, he'll start back up front. So this could work out really good for the eight if he catches a caution in the right place. If it goes green, though, I don't know if this is going to play out. Well, the best thing, the, the one thing he can hope for is this thing goes green for a long time before the rest of everybody else has to pit. 
The reason being is the fall up on his tires are going to be very close to the guys behind him right now. Uh, so being a small weight class, they're just going to sit there and ride behind him. Uh, however, if we were to have uh, an accident, um, you know, three or four laps from now, not going to work out too good for him if he stays out and stays up front because then they will have those fresh tires and they will absolutely leave him in the dust uh, like a sitting duck. So he'll have to, to wait for another caution to come out or something else to happen for him to, to play that strategy. So a lot of things going on, a lot of things to think about as a driver. You know, just typically you have a spotter, some uh, you know group of engineers helping you out in NASCAR here. It's just you, yourself, and I trying to make these decisions, and a lot of decisions have to be made pretty quick. Yeah, I was going to say that would be the downfall is if this goes to a long green flag run and gets a caution, he's going to have to pit with those guys. He, it would have to be a short caution to, to benefit him so the tires wouldn't be too different, but, I mean, so far, we've looked very calm, and it's a great sight to see. As we're about to come up on lap 110, so almost 90 laps to go. And a guy that's been up front all day, Daniel Smallwood, continuing to lead with another guy that we've seen up front all day in Brandon Massey. Yeah, just scrolling back through the field here, uh, you've got uh, Michael Sheens, Dustin Covington, Mitchell Reeves, guys that know each other. Mark Brown kind of stuck in the middle between uh, Ronald Klein, who again was back in the lap down that's going to go back on the lead lap now, sitting in eighth place. Justin Cross right behind him. Uh, and then again, we talked about it earlier, Dan Witt sitting back there, Ira Kohlhaas. How much you know damage do they have? Kohlhaas maybe have a little, but it doesn't look like a lot. It looks pretty cool. So seeing these guys ride this thing out again, I would not make any moves to the front. That's just me. I would try to stay exactly where I am, log some laps, and go from there. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge waiting game at this point. You just got to execute correctly and when you want to make these moves, especially with guys that know each other and know they have a run. Like, I look at Michael Jeans right now as one of those guys, too. Is You said it yourself. He knows a lot of those loose lug nut guys behind him. They're right there. If they wanted to make a move, they, they can, but they're not going to. It's too early to kind of show your hand. But as long as those guys kind of keep each other near each other the rest of this run, I guarantee those are going to be the first group of guys that go out there and make a run at it. Oh, absolutely. These guys, you know, coming from all of these different leagues, they're now just, we're starting to see the, the guys kind of cream rise to the crop from every, every division. And, you know, Smallwood has been a guy that has, has raced in um, – a lot of different leads running light speed racing for quite some time. Um, we, we've seen a handful of these guys who uh, might have come run in, in the same class. You know, Ronald Klein actually does the commentating for our Wednesday night leagues in the LSRL. So the guys are very familiar with familiar with each other. Uh, you know, used to running these long green flag laps. We're going to start to see them work together. Uh, kind of break out here at the end. But I tell you what, when we get the two, three, four to go, uh, the friendships will be lost because everybody's going for that win. Yeah, at the end of the day, partnerships only last until the end. And when it's all every man to themselves, they're going to go for it. You know, we've kind of seen that every man to themselves mentality earlier in this race. It's kind of calmed down now. Everyone's just taking care of each other. But, you know, at some point, it's always give and take. And then at the end of the race, it's take and no more give. So it's going to be very, very wild here at the end. They're just going to ride it out and hope to keep each other clean till the end so we can get a good finish of this thing. Yeah, it looks like everybody's in that a single file line they want to ride this thing out as long as they can so you know just waiting and seeing playing again that uh playing that waiting game you know who's going to do what and when where the caution is going to come from who's going to go how many sets of tires do we have so many six sets how many have we taken uh, all that stuff's going to come into play but again it looks like this field's about to settle down so you know, we'll uh, We'll break here for a commercial in a, in a second for Butt Kicker. You know, 
obviously Blood Kicker is sponsoring a uh, part of this race, uh, donating a Blood Kicker game or two to the winner of this race um, through uh, the presentation of Lightspeed Racing League, LSRL. So uh, we thank LSRL for putting this on, Blood Kicker for being a sponsor. Um, you know, just a, a really cool race. Again, to start 43 cars, still have 19 on the lead lap with, uh, what, 85 laps to go here. So uh, as, we go, as we go to commercial break here, we want to thank Bud Kicker, thank LSRL, Wilder Graphics, uh, companies out there that I actually run with uh, Kevin Winter, painting some of these cars that you see on the track today. So uh, that being said, we'll take a short break and we will be back here in a little bit, Daytona Motor Speedway. Matt, can you hear me? Hey, Matt. Matt, you got a copy? Matt, did you fall asleep? go back up and muscle it out. Lane, are you still here? Yeah, man. All right, we're going to have to muscle it out. I'll have to bring him up. I don't know why we're going to have to break. But he must not be around, so I'll pull him back up in there. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. We're having a little bit of uh, connection issues with our uh, our broadcast right now. But as we continue on here on lap 117, Smallwood continuing to lead. He's done a great job today. Just really good for him to keep himself up front. He's been really fast, but he's been really smart about it, too. Yeah, again, uh, you're going to see a guy that always looks aggressive, but uh, knows exactly what he's doing and what he's doing and how he's doing. It just has a lot of control over his car. You know, some not a lot of guys in, in iRacing that can do what these guys can do with cars. And like I said, I've always said, some of the top drivers in uh, Lightspeed Racing League, uh, you know, I, I would put him up against anybody in iRacing. One guy we don't have here with us today uh, out of town, uh, Cameron Hearn is one of our fastest drivers, another guy that you would have seen up front uh, more than likely. Uh, just a handful of guys out of that. Uh, you know, just again, starting to see the, the cream rise to the crop, uh, the rise to the top. Um, Hermie Sadler, another one that's always sneaky good. Lags back there. Uh, he just sits back there, comes out of nowhere. Leonard Frost, other guys like that. Uh, so, you know, those guys knowing the way we got there mixing it up with, with Daniel Smallwood, and Justin Michael, Michael Jones, and Kevin. You know, it's really cool to see a lot of these guys out of the same leagues uh, run with each other up front this fast for this long, keeping their cars clean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's got to help out a lot of these guys as well as just knowing each other so well and you know, every, it's good with LSRL and everything that we put on so far this year. It's been absolutely great. This is another one of these great events, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Glad to be a part of the booth. Um, also glad to see, you know, all these new names as well. I mean, a lot of these guys that, you know, never run with LSRL before, maybe we could see if we can run as well. Uh, awesome. Yeah, same, same thing. So, like I said, again, run a really strong, really good single file. We're going to we're going to watch these guys roll around a little bit as we, again, we're going to try and break for this commercial. Again, thanking Buck Kicker for donating the Buck Kicker to the winner, the LSRL for, uh, and Wilder Graphics for 
sponsoring second and third place. So again, we'll be right back here at Daytona Motor Speedway. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Butt kicker, feel what you've been missing. Get yours today at www.thebuttkicker.com and be sure to use promo code LSRL for 20% off. And welcome back to Daytona Motor Speedway. And now we're starting to get a mix it up here, guys. This is going to be the first round of green flag pit stops for a lot of these guys. They're calling it out. You know, already got a couple guys on pit road. Now we're seeing about four or five duck off. How are they going to control it? The 44 gets into the 24. Again, insanely difficult to get from 200 miles an hour all the way down to 65. Got into the 91 of Dan DeWitt, but I think he's gonna be okay. Uh, the 18 car, Brandon Holder, he's in for a pit. Looks like uh, the number 10, Jonathan Cross, is in for a pit. Uh, you got Ian Kohlhaas, everybody coming in here. Massey is leading up front, he's in. Uh, you, you've got all these cars coming down pit road now. So who's gonna get out without a penalty? You know, just a lot of things going on right now, and this is going to really mix it, 
makes this thing up. Now, what happens to the eight car we talked about uh, with, uh, with Jesse Knight out? Yeah, we did talk about because he did pit way off sequence with these guys. So now he might be within, you know, he still has a while until his window is probably going to open up. But, you know, now that he's separated from these guys, he's got to get back with his pack. But he'll be, you know, back racing them for position, but not for long. Uh, also interesting to see is that those loose light night guys and Michael Jean stuck with each other there towards the end and were that second group. But it seems like they stayed pretty clean coming on to pit road. I think they got lucky with the way they were single filed out and the guys that wanted to come with each other uh, helped them out a lot. Yeah, and Covington comes off first there. Uh, Mitchell Reeves looks like he overshot his pit by just a little bit. Uh, Mitchell had some damage on his car earlier. I am noticing now he does not. So I think he saved his fast repair for later on in the race. And look who's in front of him uh, with Ronald Klein in second place, coming from 20th to, to second. Again, a guy that's just going to sit back here, ride, rest, play the cards. It's these other guys come on the outside. Uh, Justin Michael, these guys coming up through the pack. Just gonna, they're going to play the hand they were dealt. Keep that fast repair as long as they can and hope for the best. As Smallwood goes to the outside and all of those guys and just kind of blows by and drops to the bottom. He is going to take over first place. Uh, you've got. No, he is he going to be a lap down? No, he should be on sequence of these guys. So I think that was yep. the yeah that was the pass for the lead. So he did he did take the lead. So Daniel Smallwood followed by Dustin Covington, Ronald Klein, Mitchell Reeds, all uh, three cars that are teammates, uh, sponsored by Over the Top Designs. Uh, another. Great painter here in high racing, uh, Justin Michael and um, Michael Jeans. Everybody in the top six, they know each other. They've raced with each other. They know what's going on. This could get very interesting to where these six guys, maybe seven guys, start to break away. Dan Witt back there in eighth, still with a fairly clean car. Going to be interesting to see where he ends up and how he can run guys as well yeah and i noticed here there's a car that we haven't talked about all day in the 44 running seventh that's anthony english he he's been pretty quiet all day haven't seen him much towards the front you know finds himself here at the end had a good sequence of stops because he came at the same time as as smallwood and the 87 but then you look behind them and guys that also came with them like the 65 of massey and some yeah, others like wit yeah, so actually those guys are going to take it to the outside and they are going to push for that lead. And now you're going to see right out of the problem. Kind of surprised that the 18 car holder did not follow them. Those are guys, again, uh, that are going to try to hook up on that outside line. And they are making some moves as with the first in half of a lap. I mean, what a move. I mean, you can't even write that. I didn't even see them in frame from where I, where I was perspective. But, you know, I just said those guys were they had a bad stop and they had kind of broken away. And there were the second group of cars there. And then all of a sudden they just go freight training by these guys at, you know, a huge amount of speed. You know, and, and was that out of design with the top guys? Were they in it full throttle? Uh, the, the fact that they're so far in front of Smallwood right now, I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, very interesting. Again, it, it's who can save that deal as long as they can save that car. As we see the 10 car down across, making some really dicey moves right there. In fifth place, he's going to go on the outside of Daniel Smallwood and drive him down, I believe, to catch that, that draft. But, right, so again, single file. Not a whole lot of people back there that would have a clean car. Uh, Ira Kohas is one guy that is, is back but has well lost the draft. Uh, you know, if he can get back up there, he can lose the draft. Yeah, and looking at the way those guys made the move, I finally think I pieced together what this is. It's tire strategy is coming into play. Remember, had a limited set of tires, six sets of tires for this race. And what I'm believing has occurred is that the three guys of the 91, 65, and 10 took tires on that stop, which is what put them so far back. But small one, everyone else went fuel only. So that's going to be very interesting to see if the three guys up front have an extra set of tires. And then, of course, 
Not to mention Justin Rideout is on a completely different strategy than these guys running third. Yeah, but I mean, 68 laps to go here, 67 laps to go here, 200 lap race, tons of different strategies, a lot of different teams out there. It's going to get really interesting here. These cars can make it about 38 to 40 laps on the tank of gas. So it's going to be interesting to see who pit when. Uh, I guess we're about four laps in here. So, you know, right around lap 180. With 20 to go, these guys are going to have to come in at least for fuel. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting, too, is that now we know that these three took tires. Is this the right call, though? Because with them taking tires, let's say this is their last set of tires. They do not have one set left to lean on on pit road. These three are going to be on older tires compared to the seven or eight behind them that didn't take them at all, and we'll have a fresh set, and we'll just blow by these three just like they did to take the lead. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it, uh, again, I'll go back to another guy just kind of being sneaky back there with uh, Brandon Holder, you know, a guy that's just sitting in the back, kind of waiting with a clean car. You know, what, what's going to happen with him? But, you know, Dan Witt out of Indiana, he's got less than one year of high racing experience. You know, he's raced street stocks, Illinois Speedway in the past. Um, that bright, good-looking red car sponsored by the Guitar Attic and Palmetto Racing. And this guy, you know, his his strategy could be completely different than everybody else's, but with less than a year behind the wheel of Irish, yeah, he's fast. Is he going to be able to stay up there? It looks like it. Who knows? But uh, just really cool to see these guys from all over the country, um, all over the world, really. So uh, you know, all these guys coming together for one cause, one thing, uh, to, to, to race together, kind of get away from the daily grind. Man, it is just an absolute blast to see these guys run. I mean, honestly, and that just reminds me of um, kind of myself. I mean, you know, I've only had iRacing for, for two months now, and it's just so fun, you know, how much you learn. And he's done a great job, obviously, as the real-life racing experience to help him out. But, I mean... He's doing a great job leading this race, and I've actually been in a couple super speedway lobbies with him in X, uh, when Xfinity was at Talladega a few weeks ago. So, I mean, he knows how to get it done. He, he's very calm. I've ridden around him. He likes to ride the back and wait to the very end to kind of get things going and get up towards the front. Yeah, absolutely. Another you know guy we talked about a ton today was Ronald Klein. You know, Ronald Klein sitting there. That's done just about everything you can think of. It's been on iRacing racing for four years, sitting over there in Alabama. He's raced dirt street stocks before. You know, he's he's done some pretty interesting things. Uh, when winning the Daytona 500 in 2018 with a fixed setup here. So, you know, just really cool to see how these guys, again, from all over the place with all different setups can come in and run these cars as fast as they can. It looks like Dan, Dan is actually kind of lose the lead to uh, Justin Rideout, but you know these guys are just really having a blast out there right now. So it looks like that top three are just pulling away. Yeah, it's very interesting how much the tires are actually kind of mattering here. You know, you don't think it's Daytona is a, a place where tires are going to matter that much to your strategy, but it clearly has because. I mean, it seems these guys are being able to put up laps to pull away from the second pack of guys that did not take tires, if that's, you know, the issue. Unsure as to what happened with Brandon Massey, though. I thought maybe he had ducked out of the, the lead pack to, um, if he, you know, ran too hot there behind the 91, but he's, you know, right up front of the second pack, but he was one of those guys that had charged towards the front, so I'm unsure as to why he hasn't taken off again like the guys in front of him did. Not sure, but I can tell you one thing right now. I mean, again, depending on strategy, not sure why and how and who's going to go where. But Justin Rideout in the number eight car has absolutely just checked out from his back. No draft ball. Yeah, I think that was a huge mistake, though, because he's way out there, and then the loose lug nut guys jumped out there and got help, and they have, you know, started to train around. And then, of course, Smallwood had joined in there 
little group there. So Smallwood making sure that these loose lug nut guys, uh, you know, stay separated, but also don't get away from them. Yeah, the number eight car, you know, sponsored by Track Racer, sitting out front, way out front, looking great at this point. But yeah, you're going to see that 48 of Covington, the 76 of uh, Ronald Klein and Smallwood. Again, guys that have raced together before. Uh, Mitchell Reeves is sitting back there as well. They're, they're gonna they're gonna tote the mail here uh, shortly. And it looks like did the number eight car come in for a pit. Um, I believe it. Yep, he finally hit his window there, which is gonna be very interesting because he went from lap 102 all the way to 137. So. With the math there, he's still not good. He's probably going to have to make one more stop before this is over. And based on the amount of time that he was making, if it was me, I would have taken fuel only there, just gotten uh, what I could. Um, we'll see again how does how does that play out for him because if he loses the draft big time, we're just seeing him come out of pit road now. I mean, these guys are absolutely fly by him. He did not take tires. So, again, where the strategy comes into play, very, very interesting strategies from a lot of different guys. Uh, it's starting to come down to the wire here. Who's got what in the pit it is now falling back to the fifth place. So, you know, again, who has it? Who's going to have it at the end? Uh, if I had to put my money on anybody right now, I'm probably going to put it on Daniel Smallwood, but you could really roll the dice with any of the top 10 right now at this track. I mean, absolutely. It's plate racing at the end of the day. I, I don't, I don't even think I could really pick at this point. I, I, if I had to guess maybe a team, it'd probably be one of these loose lug nut guys. I mean, they just stayed smart. They've stayed with each other all race and they've done a good job just keeping each other in check and, and helping each other out. But that's going to be very interesting for this eight car now, right? Because he's pitted and he can only go, he only went about 30 laps on fuel. So now the question is, if you only go about 30 to 35 laps on fuel and you have to make one more stop, then, you know, if you have to make one more stop, that's going to be huge because be if these guys have to make one more stop. Strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really going to put him behind the eight ball, uh, you know. But you've got these these guys up here, in my opinion, are just kind of feeling each other out right now. Um, you know, Covington, uh, Covington, Klein, Smallwood, Reeves, uh, those those three cars that look uh, very similar, uh, all running and sponsored by Ray's Energy as well. Um, you know, with Smallwood packed in the middle here, they're just sizing each other up. They may be teammates now. They will not be teammates at lap 198, I guarantee you. Uh, so just going to be interesting to see what happens uh, to who, when it happens. Who's going to step out? Who's going to take that risk? Are they going to get to the high side? Is anybody going to go with them? Uh, you know, the preferred way around this track is having that double punt for sure, no doubt about it. So, um, But we have seen a couple of packs blow by on the outside. So... Just sitting back and waiting now. It's a waiting game if we can keep it clean and size the line in front of the up to the end of this race. Yeah, and I want to mention one guy that's in this lead pack that, you know, we haven't really thought of. Another guy that is a lap down, which could also affect the eight, is the 30 car of yeah. Reed Christensen. He's been a lap down this whole time. He's fighting for the free pass, basically. And as long as he stays ahead and he gets a caution, you know, he's back in this thing because we know cautions will breed cautions. And that would be huge if he's able to get back on the lead lap and be able to race with these guys at the end. Yeah, the unfortunate thing for him that you're going to see here shortly is Justin Rideout. The lap down is he's coming quickly again on the outside. He's right behind the 30 car right now on the outside. Looks like he's by himself with no help. Uh, that number eight car sitting there in 20th place, Justin Rideout. Ooh, small wood makes a little wiggle coming out of uh, coming up two there, but you know, Rideout is making ground still. Um, and I hope he didn't take tires, but he may have, considering how long he was in pits. Just going to be interesting to see what happens with his car if he can stay out front. But those two right there, yeah, battling for the lead 
uh, of, of the first car lap down. So uh, we still got a fight going on in the top six between two lap down cars. Yeah, and just crunching the numbers a little bit here, they can, yeah, they're they going to go around maybe 40 laps of fuel here. So the guys up front are still going to have to make one more pit stop, so will the eight. But the unfortunate reality for the eight car is that when those guys take their stops, he's going to have to get a caution because he will have to make another pit later and then go a lap down again. So he won't be battling with these guys as everyone up here has about one stop left. That's right, man. And it's just going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, I'm not quite sure. We should be getting down uh, right about lap 60, probably about 15 laps away from these guys having to pit again, I believe. Um, and I know you may have kept the note on when they came in and pit the, the first green flag stop. But, you know, around that 38 to 40 lap mark is going to be interesting to see when they come in as a group. Uh, man, if they all have to come in like this, as close as they are, uh, we could have some serious fireworks, that's for sure. Yeah, that's the thing that's going to be unfortunate for those guys. You know, these guys don't have to worry as much. They're playing it simple. It's just pit and make sure they stay with this pack. Don't do anything, you know, dumb and and speed down pit road or make a mistake. But it's it's a very interesting situation that the eight has put himself in because... Like I said, he pitted around 10 laps after this pack of cars. So he has a 10 lap window to get a caution. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. It would almost have to happen, you know, when they're coming to pit road. I just don't see it happening once they're back up to speed and kind of just riding around. He's going to have to have some sort of miracle kind of get him back into this by the strategy that is kind of played out in his hands. Yeah, and it looks like he's taking the uh, the 30 car with him up there to the front. And, um, you know, some guys riding around in the back that are, are, again, still in the mix. Brandon Massey's been up front all day. Uh, Ira Kolhas is right behind him. But for uh, a good good while now, you've seen Dustin Covington, the, uh, you, you, some may say the third driver of that team, uh, he is obviously telling them, I am the first driver of this team, fellas. You're going to follow me as long as I'm up front. I am not moving. But, you know, these guys, a uh, lot of time on the track. Mitchell Reeves, his other partner, five years of experience in iRacing, six years of experience behind a real car. So, you know, these guys know how to make it to the end. You can see how this is going to play out for them to start 43 cars and have 20 cars on the lead lap with about 50 laps to go here. That's a lot of accidents, obviously, that have happened, but a lot of guys, that's 20 guys that have played their strategy fairly well to stay up here. So uh, Covington's still leading, looking strong, teammates with him, Smallwood just biding his time as long as he can. So any of these guys will be able to take it. The last, uh, the last round of pit stops and the last 10 laps of this race will get very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, and you mentioned Covington being that the kind of the third driver of that team, too. It's been very interesting. It's almost like he's kind of been the, the alpha voice today, though. I mean, he's been all over. He's been the lead guy on most of these restarts. When, when Ronald was a lap down, he was the one that was pushing Ronald to get him into that free pass spot. So he's done a lot to keep keep those guys in it here towards the end. And, I mean, he's done a lot, so I guess, you know, He's hoping that it results in maybe a one, two, three, or, you know, more importantly, maybe to himself, a win for himself that he's worked so hard this whole race to be here. Absolutely. And a little leapfrog action there with Massey jumping around uh, Dan Witt in the 10 or the 91 car, that big red car. So, uh, you know, going to be interesting to see uh, his strategy is to start moving now or is he going to wait a little bit longer? You know, as they, come firing down the back stretch again, closing that window very quickly. I would say within the next 10 laps, we're going to have some cautions here, or I'm sorry, some pit stops here, hopefully no cautions. Uh, going to be interesting to see who can get on and off of pit road. That in itself here takes as much, if not more skill than getting around this track and keeping your car clean. So, you know, understatement of the year there uh, so far to say 
how hard or try to, to replicate and how many of these drivers did replicate getting onto pit road in practice. Um, you know, a lot of guys just try to come out and turn a fast lap for qualifying or draft with their buddies and they direct the car and practice and they just hop into brand new and new tires, go back out and do the same thing. But who's actually practiced getting onto pit road, coming off this track for 200 miles an hour? You know, going to be interesting here in the next 10 to 15 laps. Stay tuned, we'll be right back here at Daytona Motor Speedway. Butt kicker, feel what you've been missing. yours today at www.thebuttkicker.com and be sure to use promo code LSRL for 20% off. And welcome back to Daytona Motor Speedway. This is uh, Anthony Giuliano in the booth with Landon Quisenberry. There's been a little bit of action up front, not too much. You know, uh, we've seen Daniel Smallwood, Michael Jeans, and Brandon Massey. Uh, Massey and Jeans really working together to come up front. Um, again, closing this window down. You know, within the next 10 laps, these guys are going to have the pit. We should start to hear them call that out soon. Going to be interesting to see what they do from here on out. Everybody's yeah, still mean, staying a little single file here. It's kind of the follow the leader right now, right? Yeah, they kind of shuffled around a little bit, but I think they're going to try and stop that when they get to that window. And we only got about five or six laps before they start coming down pit road. But I think that's what they want to do. They're going to try and keep it single file until they come down pit road and make sure they minimize the mistakes coming on there, do what they did last time and stay really calm. So that way, once they come out of pit road, it's that's where everyone's going to go for it. I think that's when... Once this pit stop sequence is over is when everyone's going to start to show their hand and get out there. Oh, absolutely. And coming back from that commercial, you know, obviously we want to thank Wilder Graphics again for uh, sponsoring this race as well. Uh, Wilder Graphics coming up with some of the, the best paints on iRacing that you'll see. Obviously, you can see there in the commercial. So if you're an iRacer out there watching this and you're in need of a paint, go look us up on Facebook. Wilder Graphics, um, shoot us a PM, let us know what you're looking for. If you can think it up, we can paint it. So all you got to do is is drop us a line on Facebook, uh, reach out to us, and we'll get you in a hot looking hot rod as soon as we can. So uh, again, looking back up front here, still follow the leader for the most part. Brandon Massey out front, followed by Ira Kolhas. Michael Jeans in third, Daniel Smallwood in fourth, Drew, uh, I'm sorry, Dustin Covington, who was leading for quite some time, 
uh, in fifth, followed by Mitchell Reeves, his teammate, followed by the same teammate in Ronald Klein in seventh. A uh, very impressive drive by Ronald Klein today, uh, coming from a lap down in 20th, back up to seventh. Mark Brown, guy yeah, we haven't talked about much at all in that 73 car is now caught up with this group. Justin Michael still a fast car, even though he has damage, uh, assuming he has used his uh, fast repair already. Dan Witt back in 10th place in that big red machine. Uh, car still looks good. He could be hanging back. Jonathan Cross looked got a little bit of damage on the rear end of his car in 11th. Anthony English, kind of the same situation with him. That, that another clean car hanging back there, though. Brandon Holder in that 18 car, again, would not be shocked to see after this round of pit stops, him start to make some moves. Jeff Glockner back in 14th. Ed Fowler sitting there with a fairly clean car in 15th, just uh, hanging in there. So, you know, Fowler and uh, Holder would not, would not shock me to see either one of those guys come back up through the pack here you know, after this round of pit stops and you know, start to press for the lead with the guys that we have not heard from in quite some time. And they just come out of nowhere to, to, to dice it up with these guys up front. So going to be fun. We're going to start to see these pit stops, I would assume, here shortly. So stay tuned and we'll uh, we'll watch out for, for who is, uh, is going to be able to put on a show. Yeah, it's just been... It's been great to see these. I was finally kind of calmed down. They got it. It was all that first half that was really wild, and now everyone's calmed themselves down. We've run single file, but it's not going to be that way for the next 40 laps after these pit stops. That's when everyone's going to go. And, I mean, a lot of guys that have been in front all day have done a good job to keep themselves. I mean, Mass, it, it's it's a huge testament to the guys that have been up front, like, like Massey, Cole Haas, and Smallwood, and then you know, the three teammates behind them of Covington, Reeves, and Klein. I mean, they've done a great job. They've been up front all day, and now they have a shot here at the end to, you know, come home winner. Yeah, and don't forget, too, you still have uh, the eight car of Justin Rideout and then Reed Christensen right beside him. They are on the lead lap, but they are on the tail end of the lead lap, so they are not your leaders. Brandon Massey, uh, what looks like on the TV screen is riding in third is actually your leader. So, uh, again, very interesting to see when that pit strategy uh, is going to happen for these guys. Are they going to try and short pit? My guess is they're going to ride this thing out as long as they can. Because everybody is going to come up very quick on the number 121 of Lance Thompson. Hopefully, he is going to stay on the low side uh, because it is a long freight train right behind him. Yeah, and even more than one's actually going to pit here, so we should be okay. Yeah, he's going to hop out of the way here. But I was going to say it was more interesting as well about the whole two lap cars in front of these guys is that Rideout is on a completely different strategy. So he doesn't really care about the guys behind him pitting. However, Christensen does. He's on the same strategy as the guys behind him. So He's the car in front. He's not a lead lap car, but he wants to pit with these guys so he doesn't lose the draft. Because then if he does that, he's just going to go a lap down and possibly even lose the pack if that happens. So it's going to be really... And, and right yeah, now, I'm sorry to cut you off, but they're starting to call for pit stops. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these guys are getting on the pit road. I've heard a couple of cars saying they're already on pit road, but it's, that means this lead group is going to have to jump down here at some point. Uh, you see the number 73 of Martin Brown jumping down. How many more laps are we going to get here with, before these uh, top cars pit? I don't think it's going to be too many. So uh, let's just keep our eyes peeled. I'll stay on the race chat to see who is pitting and when. Uh, but now this is where the strategy comes into play. And how much fuel can they save in this draft is another thing I'd like to know. Uh, they can run 40 laps by themselves, but in this draft where you're lifting and you're not the front guy all the time, how much fuel can they save? Uh, you know, we're expecting them to pit right around lap 160, 165, which is right around this area. So if they can go a little bit longer than that, that tells us. But, uh, you know, these guys should be able to make it after this pit stop all the way. Uh, but they're going to ride it out as long as they can uh, so that they do not have to pit again. Uh, this thing should and hopefully will go green the rest of the way. 
Absolutely, and I'm just not sure about that call by Mark Brown coming down there, though. He had absolutely no one come down there with him. He's going to have no help coming out of the pits, and this lead pack is going to eat him up and just gap him. So that, that's you know another challenge. You have to make sure you have guys coming with you, and that's going to bite him as if he may lose this pack because of him coming by himself. Yeah, now it's about to get very interesting. Brandon Massey just called out that he is pitting. So our leader is going to pit here. How is that going to look getting on the pit road? A couple of guys behind him, Dan Witt's calling out pitting. So all of these guys now going to get kind of a mad dash down the pit road. And uh, a couple guys did not pit, but said they were going to. Uh, Witt comes down, Cross comes down, uh, Ira Kohlhaas comes down, Massey did pit. Uh, Michael Jeans is now calling out his intent to pit. Reed Christensen did come down that lap bar. So we're going to see how this plays out uh, again, sitting back there now in seventh, rolling around as Brandon Holder. But you've got the rest of these guys starting to come in. The 08 is going to come in. Michael Jeans and Smallwood here. You're going to see them duck off. And I believe Mitchell Reeves uh, would come off at some point here with them. But here they go down on the pit road. Looks like those teammates are going to stay out. Smallwood makes it on the pit road. Jeans makes it on the pit road safely. Looks like they're going to be okay. Yeah, big split between the pack there on this set of stops compared to the last one. And I I'm just not sure about the 30. I, I don't know if he spent on pit road or not. And I think that's going to be a huge blow to his chances here because he came in really hot and I just don't think he got it woed down enough. I think he had to serve a penalty. And yeah, now you got, uh, you know, three cars out front, uh, the Rays Energy over the top design cars. Uh, now we've got the 02 car, 48 and 76 cars pitting. Those teammates are coming down the pit. Uh, they were just catching up to that lead pack. How's that strategy going to work out for them? It looks like all of those guys are going to come in, make it on the pit road safely. I don't think any of them are going to, uh, you know, Ronald had a little bit of a slow entry on pit compared to the other two, but I think that's, they're going to be okay coming out of the pit. So interesting to see how this thing is going to play out uh, from here on with Covington, Reeves, and the 76 car Ronald Klein. And you call it a 30 car did have a speeding penalty, so he is going to have to come back down pit road. Yeah, he just didn't get woed up. I think he knew that those guys were coming. He just didn't know what group he was going to go with. And like I said, I knew that was going to be a challenge for him, and that's kind of thrown away his race now. That's He wanted to be back on the lead lap just in case that caution came out, and then he made a mistake being up in front of that pack. I know that's what he wanted to be, to be back on the, the lead lap, the tail end of the lead lap, because then it would help if a caution came out, but it ultimately hurt him because he had no idea when to really hit his marks to slow down to hit with that pack. Yeah, now here's the interesting part is we've got Justin Michael – who is running fourth with Brad Holder right behind him. And they are going to come up on these leaders that just came out of pit road with a ton of speed. Guess what? Daniel Smallwood right behind him and not too terribly far behind them are the duo of Brandon Massey and Ira Kolhas. So the three teammates not able to come out right bumper to bumper, which is going to hurt them. They're going to have to fall in somewhere, uh, but you know, how will they shake out from here? Who knows? But those cars, again, Holder, we said he's going to sit back there. He's just biding his time. He, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in second after this lap. Uh, but he has Daniel Smallwood right on his bumper. And I'm telling you, just giving him a bump down the, the back stretch there. Uh, going to be very interesting to see how he holds up again with drivers he hasn't been around all day. I mean, that almost worked out per like perfectly for those guys, you know, and then they came out ahead of those guys that pitted. They were able to keep with each other better, and wow, Smola just completely abandons the 18 there as he tried to follow Jeans. The 87 on the move right now to the lead. Justin Michael leading laps with a torn up back end of that car. Actually, it looks clean. I think he saved that fast repair till the end, and he's used it now, so his car is completely clean. Yep, he absolutely did save that fast repair. Uh, so that Toyota Camry is out there with zero damage after he has had a, uh, a messed up car pretty much all day, getting a bump from uh, Smallwood there. Uh, the teammates of Reeves, Covington, and Klein have been able to get 
back with each other on the outside line. Now you have them kind of ducking down behind Holder and Michael Jeans. So very interesting. All fast cars, all great drivers up front uh, here in that top group of eight. Uh, Massey and, and uh, looks like Cole Haas coming up to round out that top eight. Going to be very interesting to see here as this race goes on with just 30 laps to go. So interesting note. So apparently Michael Jeans is a lap down. The first car one lap down. So he sits in the free pass spot. Not sure what happened if he got a penalty and had to come back with these guys, but very unfortunate for him. But he's in a good spot if a caution comes out. That was very interesting to see those three teammates ducked out like they were going to make a move on the outside. And then Holder had jumped out with those guys and then they did not want him leading that pack. They were all in it for themselves and they ducked back down, almost caused a wreck, but they are in it amongst themselves and nobody else. Yeah, and I think at this point, everybody up front knows that the, the, the guys that are in this front pack, they're all going to race clean. So why risk it? Why try to, to take it up front? You know, we get to the end of this deal, you know, then that's going to be time. You're going to risk it for the biscuit with these suckers. And yeah, you stand on that loud pedal. You're not going to let off. You're, you're not going to bump draft. And, I mean, you're, you're going to get around whoever's there. So I think right now they're just going to hold tight sit there, play their strategy, uh, waiting. But then you have three cars at the end of this race that are, will work together. Are there three cars at the front of this pack in front of them that are all going to work together to keep them behind? I don't know. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens. Again, I'm here with about 29, 28 laps to go. Interesting as the leaders had to go and weave around a pack of lap cars here led by our pole sitter there, Mark Mann, unfortunate for him. Came back up towards the front earlier in the day and just kind of faded away, so not really sure what had happened to him, but he did a good job starting up front, led a few laps. Just tough break for him. But I want to point out that was very interesting about Justin Rideout. You know, he was on that strategy, he got back on the lead lap now, but he is way behind this pack when they all pitted with each other and and this, you know, pack of three cars is already pitted as well. Uh, they just did not pit with him, and they lost that lead group a ton. So that lead group of cars executed pit road perfectly. The second group, not so much. Yeah, the eight car does have some people with him, but uh, he is well behind, uh, over straight away behind the lead pack. So I don't think they're going to be able to catch up as long as these guys stay single file. However, these guys up front may get a little dicey uh, once we get to about 20 to go and they may catch up, who knows. But um, I mean, right now, looking strong is Justin Michael uh, in that Toyota Camry. I mean, what a smart play by him. I mean, we, we had thought maybe he had used up that fast repair earlier on when he had that rear end damage, but he had just stuck with it and saved it to the end, and now he's at a clean race car. So that was just great strategy by him, and it's probably a lot faster than what it was, you know, earlier on. So And that's probably it was taking some of these guys that have been with him the whole time by surprise. Absolutely. So that, uh, that car that was a little banged up, uh, sponsored looks like uh, by 511 Tactical is absolutely clean, ready to rock for the rest of this race as they come up on some lap traffic here. Um, a little bit close, it's a little bit of a close call there, but um, you know, he is he is looking good, looking strong. I think he is gonna be okay. Smallwood is gonna be okay. Jeans is gonna be okay. Here comes Holder on the outside. Man, the lap down car pushing him. Very interesting. They may be teammates. I'm not exactly, exactly sure. I'd have to look in our uh, Discord here, but we have a couple of guys here. Massey coming back up on that high side as well. And this is a huge move for Mann as well because this will put him ahead of Michael Jeans, which would give him the free pass spot if there's a wreck that occurs. Yep, and Mann is by himself. Now, I will say that, that Jeans... Uh, right out, uh, 
Justin Michael, Jeff Glockner, and Daniel Smallwood are all in the same team. So you're going to have Smallwood and Michael working with each other. Jeans is also going to do the same. So those three up there, we're talking about, are there three that will stay together to keep the three of Reeves, Covington, and Klein back behind them? Yes, those are going to be the three. The 87 car, Justin Michael in the lead right now. Um, you, Brandon Holder is up there actually by himself with not a lot of help, a little bit of help from uh, Mr. Man there. But you're going to have Smallwood and Jeans tagging along with Justin Michael to keep those other three uh, behind them as long as they can. Uh, I think the wild card here is going to be Holder and Massey. One of those two, those are two wild cards. We just don't know how and who is going to work with them, if anybody. I mean, exactly. I didn't even know that the three that are, you know, on the bottom lane leading it right now had a connection with each other. And that's huge. But, you know, that's also going to be super frustrating now is if that caution comes out and, you know, Smallwood and Michael are doing everything they can to get Jeans in a good position to get himself back into this. But if somehow man inches ahead of Jeans and gets that free pass away from that's got to be super frustrating for that whole entire group. Absolutely. And, and Holder is definitely by himself. So, he, you know, he is going to be a one man car and a lot like a, a NASCAR situation where you have Hendrick Motorsports and Roush Fenway and Joe Gibbs and so on and so forth. You know, we have that pack up there uh, with Michael uh, Smallwood and uh, Reeves. We have that pack up there again with, um, um, I'm sorry, Jeans. Then you have Mitchell Reeves, Covington and Klein are in that second group. Um, Holder kind of that one man deal. He's kind of the Wood Brothers car out there, if it, as it as it may. Yeah, he's the one guy that doesn't have two or three other guys to help him. As Justin Massey makes a wicked move to get in front of the O2 Mitchell Reeves, he gets a little squirrely and he's going to hold on to it. But man, he really made a tough, tough move going into one and two able to save it coming down the back stretch. Uh, great save by Massey, but hopefully it doesn't uh, touch that line again. Yeah, and the big thing is the implications for this whole pack just gets bigger and bigger. This is not only for, you know, the leaders and for the win, but another lap car. Like I said, the free pass is a lot because we know they're going to get wild and could get a caution. The 67 of Tyler Warder is at the end of this pack and is also a lap down. So if he gets up there and races with those three, it's going to get even more wild. There's a lot of different agendas up front at the moment that's going to play into a very interesting finish. Yeah, now we're coming down to 20 to go. Like I said, you're going to start to see some moves. We are going to go three wide here. Mitchell, uh, Mitchell, Reeves, and Covington, or at least they're going to try. They got the door closed. They are going to come up on some lap cars that may have uh, changed their decision on how they were going to pass them. But uh, now it's going to get a little bit dicey. The three cars ahead of them uh, start with Mark Brown, Justin Cross, and Randy Sally. So when this lead car or this lead pack gets to them, how do they get around safely? That's a big part of this race. One car drops down to the apron, which really helps uh, everybody else kind of going around the outside in turns one and two, keeping it safe. A little bit of bobble there. Massey, man, he made a close call with Mitch, Mitchell right behind him, but it looks like they're all going to pass relatively clean. And then after that, it is all out. Yeah, there could have been some frustration there. They were on the back straightaway, so there was, you know, one lane they could have gone on the apron. Maybe not so much, you know, when they had caught the 33 when they did but the 10, but they got around them pretty cleanly. And that really, as much as it should have helped the top side, it actually hurt them. They lost their momentum completely. And really odd there, the... 18 and Holder jumps out. Uh, Jeans goes with him and then he completely abandons Jeans on the outside. Again, one of those guys that's kind of a teammate. Well, Massey's going to come up and help him now, but a teammate with Smallwood and Michael. Now, I would say if uh, Massey can get him up front, then obviously his team, hopefully his teammates are going to let him back down in that bottom line. But um, really 
good move by Holder there to get down in that bottom line. Yeah, that kind of took me by surprise that Jeans would abandon his two teammates up towards the front and go to the top side, and this may hurt him because if the top side dies out a little bit, the 4 went down to the bottom to take advantage of that, and even the 10 just went a lap down, is now in contention for the free pass. There is about as many lap cars in this lead pack as there are leaders. Yeah, and now you see Michael jump up in front of Jeans. I think it, what's going to happen here is they are going to let Smallwood come up in front of them and then jump in front of Michael. It's the only scenario that I can see this working, if Smallwood is going to do that. However, knowing Smallwood, Daniel is not going to jump up into that line unless he has to, because if he's got a chance for this win, he is going to go for it. So let's see how he does. He looks like he's getting pretty close. He's not quite clear yet. But his two teammates on the outside, he's got an unknown behind him with Justin Holder, if not a teammate of his. So very interesting to see how this is going to play out, out as we come down with 17 laps to go in this race. And then there's a little group of three with uh, similar matching paint schemes but with different colors that look to almost make it three wide there on the outside. It's going to get absolutely crazy here at the end. And then, you know, if it breaks loose, one of these lap cars are going to get a huge break. Yeah, Lynn, and that's uh, what they're hoping for. Um, obviously, that, that first car lap down with Michael Jeans, he is definitely hoping for it because he's sitting on that outside. Uh, but nobody else up there, I guarantee you, is, uh, is wanting that to happen. As you see Massey drop down to the inside, leaving Jeans and Michael on the outside. Uh, Massey down on the inside now. Uh, behind man has holder right in front of him again in smallwood now we're going to see uh, mitchell reeves and covington kind of suck up to that outside line uh, again with there we go ronald klein so you know a lot of moves being made now coming to the stripe at lap 185 going on to 186 so we're starting to see some moves who who is in that pack that can get down to that outside or inside line or stay in that outside line, uh, make it across that starch finish line. It, what looks is going to be probably a photo finish. Yeah. And you got to think all these teammate moves with about 15 to go, we're just going to go to the wayside and out the window. There's a lot that can go on right now. And especially if there is a wreck too, you don't want to be involved in it, especially if you're the free pass car. Cause if you get involved in the wreck, you don't get the free pass. So, it's just very interesting. And all these guys, too, you know, they have this teammate agenda right now. But once we get to five to go, no one's teammates anymore. It's all for the win. Yeah, definitely nobody is safe when we get that close. Um, looks like Reeves is going to step out now and make it three wide going into two. Is he going to be able to hold it? It is three wide. Jeans in the inside in the middle of that. Holders on the inside. Jeans is going to back out, come back down. Man, I'm telling you what, it's starting to get dicey. Again, we're going to get close to 10 laps to go here. You're going to start to see more moves like that as we get closer and closer to that white flag and checkered flag. Oh, oh. Jeans almost gets into man there. Yeah, that was almost huge. I almost thought there was going to be the wreck, and that would have been between the two guys battling for that free pass. Not so. The 87 with a huge run. I just do not like what the outside has going for them right now because you just know with those three lined up, you know, in from third to fifth in that line, they're going to jump out. They've already shown it. Like, Reeves has already done it once. He just got pinched by Jeans and also didn't really have Covington right there behind him to give him a shove. But those guys are not going to sit there and just push you for the rest of this race. Absolutely. We got another lap down car that they have to get around here going into turns one and two everybody kind of gets tightened up uh, and and that is the number eight car we talked about with justin right out and how his strategy is going to play out i think he's found out the hard way it was not the way he wanted it to to play out being a lap down uh, but now these cars again still line uh, nose to tail as we're going into turn one here uh, again with Justin Michael and Daniel Smallwood just picked the second of who's the leader, but just battling it out turn by turn. 
Yeah, and that was huge for Rideout, too, because we pitted so much later. That is actually the second lap that he's went down, so he's in no contention. The free pass is now. There they go. I said it. They're taking it three wide. Here comes Reeves to the top. As he takes it to the top, Massey's going to sit there on the inside, drop to the inside, from the middle to the inside behind me, and now he's going to get behind Jeans. Those top three are going to stay together. You can guarantee that. Ronald Klein is going to suck right up there behind him. That is going to push Justin Michael out front and past Daniel Smallwood. Holder is going to hold up with Daniel Smallwood on that bottom line as they get a run going back into turn one and two, still three wide. With Smallwood on the inside, Michael in the middle, Reeves on the outside. Reeves is going to get a huge push from Covington. Massey looks like he is going to try and push Jeans, the lap down car, in the middle of this, just uh, holding on for dear life. But uh, Heck of a wheel man. Massey gets into the 67 there, almost spins him out. Man, that could have been a close one and a big one. The 67 did a heck of a job saving it. He really did not want that to happen because he had just gotten up to the free pass spot for the first time, and that just wasn't going to work out. The run did die out, though, for those guys on the top, so it seems that they might have learned something. Even though that it didn't work out now, they kind of learned if it's going to work out later on. And and I can't even believe that Smallwood kept the lead. He had no help on the bottom whatsoever when they went three wide and somehow maintained it. Absolutely. And again, we talked at the beginning of the race. The low line is the fast line around this track when you have help. No doubt about it. So, yeah, he is going to stay there and he's going to stay planted on that inside line until it comes to green, white, checkered or green uh, <laughs> at green, sitting at green, come to white and checkered. If he has somebody get a run on the outside and he can slip up and kind of slide job up in front of them, he will. But for the rest of this race, until lap 99, he is going to stay on that bottom line. You can guarantee it. Yeah, I just got to think that I don't know if this move for Reeves is going to work out. When they jumped up the first time, it was really only him and Covington. I think it's starting to show the individuality of all the guys in that pack because – their teammate Klein should have went up there and helped them, and everyone probably thought that he would have, but it's almost like he laid back thinking that they would wreck so he'd be able to avoid it. So now the teammates are starting to go away here at the end. Well, again, Ronald's one of those guys where he knows that that, that checkered flag doesn't come out on lap 190. It comes out on lap 199 coming to the 200. So he, he's not going to push it too much right now especially if it's three wide and the first thing he is going to do if he's back that far and see somebody spin out he is going to drop to that yellow line as fast as he can to get away from that wreck it's massey and reeves touch going down the back stretch they touch again both of them save it reeves is going to drop back massey's going to come in front of him so how is that going to play out for the rest of this deal as reeves drops to the bottom comes back up behind massey but i am sure he is not happy with what just happened there. Absolutely not. I thought he'd stick to the bottom just to abandon him so he could get away from him. I cannot even believe they didn't get into Holder there. That was almost one of the worst things that could have happened for that lead pack. No doubt. You've got, again, we talked earlier, we're coming up on some lap cars here, so they're probably going to stay where they're at for right now. Uh Again, teammates are, are going to move a little bit. Covington is now in front of Reeves, but we talked about it earlier. The guy that's sitting back in 18th just driving was uh, was Holder, who was sitting up there. You know, oh, man, we had that eight car. Justin Rideout got loose and almost took out Massey. But, you know, Holder sitting up there technically running, I guess, second in that bottom line. Now we've got a run of three of those teammates on the outside. Will they have enough to get around? the other four that is the question i think that was the perfect storm for him if this is the time it's going to be now because it was only the two rows of two below them i mean that was almost perfect the way right out had to kind of made that mistake but now again their run is kind of dying out on the back straight away they're getting a little bit of a push though they got hooked up better is covington yeah. gonna abandon them though now, Covington, he'll definitely stay with Reeves. Reeves is actually the one that got him to the dance there with a little bit of a push. Um, Klein is just there to stay in that draft tunnel. He is not going to push Reeves unless Reeves comes off of 
the bumper of Covington. If that happens, then he'll give him a nudge to get up there. Otherwise, he's just staying in that train to keep that wind tunnel open. Uh, right now, kind of hung out the dryer. The two guys in the middle doing a great job in Justin Michael and Michael Jeans. And then now you see Covington drop low behind Michael Jeans, still leading Daniel Smallwood in that number 37 car. I mean, it's getting wild down here to the finish. We're about to come to four laps to go through turn three. That middle lane, just it's been formed, but they just lose their help. With their help being those three teammates, it's its unlikely you're going to get pushed ahead. So they're going to have to hope for some kind of major run to get them ahead of the bottom lane here if they're going to want it to work out in their favor. Absolutely. And with three laps to go, we can start to see some guys in front of them going into turn one and two that are going to be... Uh, an object to get around and it's going to be difficult they're not going to be able to stay three wide oh and the eight car gets loose massey taps him he gets low it looks like he's able to save it on the bottom with no caution so they will stay caution free man that really helped the uh the team of three out there but definitely hurt massey as now he is losing the draft at a rapid pace yeah, that is super frustrating for Massey now as they're coming to three laps to go. And there's oh, contact. Jeans no. is around. Oh, they might save it. No! Covington gets clipped. Oh, that was just unfortunate. Covington gets in. Covington gets into Jeans, and they're all off of the race, and there is no caution. That was huge. It's almost a two-car race now coming to two to go. There'll be two to go at the line. I mean, it's it's only Smallwood and Michael now. He, the only thing that's going to stop these two, it's going to be amongst themselves unless Reeves and Klon can get back together, but I just think they're too separated. I think it's going to be a two-car race, and the only way that those two get back in it is if they wreck. Absolutely, and they're just going around the uh, lap cars now. Um that is going to be interesting to see what happens with those two guys. Uh, looks like Mitchell Reeves is still okay and has Ronald Klein behind him. He's not going to have enough time. As coming to the white flag, it's just going to be Jeans. Or I'm sorry, it's going to be Justin Michael and Daniel Smallwood. So what is going to happen here? Going to be very, very interesting. It is because now you have to think about if you really want a lap car interfering with the finish because now that Witt is up with this pack, he could push the 87 to the win or he could not. So a lap car is going to play a huge factor into this one, whether you like it or not, unless Witt drops out of this draft. Absolutely. And with one to go, this is very interesting here. Dan Witt is saying that he'll, uh, he'll bump him if he wants it. So going to be very, very interesting you know, there's no way that, that Mitchell Reeves or Ronald Klein can catch him. Uh, Mitchell's pretty much got that spot locked up. Klein is going to give him some bump down the backstretch, but, you know, it's going to come up here on Michael. Is he going to step out of line and bump him? Michael looks like he's just going to stay right behind, and now he's going to try to peek out on the outside. He's going to make it. He's going to get the side draft. He is going to get it. He is pushing. He is in it. He is going to get the push and the draft. And wow. Justin Michael. How about that? Justin Michael takes the win 200 laps at Daytona. That was a perfectly executed move. He could have done it any better. If he made it any earlier, Smallwood would have blocked him. He could not have had that. That was the only way Smallwood would have won is if he threw the block as he made the move. Perfect played by the 87 of Justin Michael. Absolutely incredible and especially for 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 daniel smallwood to to run that race the way he did he couldn't have run it any better but man what a side draft justin michael got there mitchell reeves comes in third ronald klein fourth brandon holder the guy that was 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 back there uh so far ended up fifth brandon massey ended up finishing in sixth but man let's get some of these drivers up here ask them uh how they uh how they did and, and uh i know michael is excited and we'll, we'll get him into the booth here in a second but we'll try and start out 
uh, with uh, with Mitchell Reed. All right, and we've got the number three place finisher here in Mitchell Reeves after 200 laps and three hours, just over three hours at Daytona. Uh, so how do you feel about your race strategy, your teammates? Looks like you kind of had some things going on there. Tell us a little bit about what you were thinking going into the race with your teammates. How did it work out at the end and what didn't work out for you at the end? Well, the main thing, you know, our game plan going in was just to survive. And, you know, I think... <laughs> We all three saw the uh, the last 10 laps, and, you know, our, our main goal was with about 50 to go was we wanted to be up front and, you know, be in contention. And we, you know, we got through the crazy, crazy first part of that race and um, ended up finding ourselves in position. And then, you know, we got there about five, three to go, and, you know, it was names that I've seen racing. I've raced with for years, Justin Michael, Daniel Smallwood, Michael Jeans, all them, and, um, that little wreck there coming to two to green or two to go thought we could maybe get back up there, but Ron had to lift a little bit just to avoid it. But man, after the craziness of this race and, uh, messing up and being all the way in the back, all the way to the front, being in some wrecks, uh, to come on P3, can't be complained too much. Um, you know, glad to, glad to be a part of it. And we'll probably, we're going to see if we can swing at the next one for sure. Yeah. 10, four, we're definitely going to put on another one, man. Congratulations. Uh, you know, going to have a, a purse of $50 there by uh, Wilder Graphics for you for finishing third. So you did did a great job. You know, we, we also saw that you guys got tied up in some wrecks early and saved those fast repairs for later on the race. Very impressed with that strategy. So, you know, congratulations, man. Uh, you know, great run in the, in the Rays energy car uh, over the top designs. All you guys from Loose Lug Nuts driving up front. Uh, we, we were uh, kind of doting on you guys the entire race. We knew that whole crew would run together, and it was going to be some great race at the end. So congratulations on third. Uh, and I got to give you a shout-out to my, fi uh, shout out <laughs> to my fiance, uh, Caitlin, for everything she does and supports. And, man, um, you know, we go through real racing from March to November, and then I I race till my my eyes bleed in the off season. So, Huge shout out to her for all the support she gives me. I love her so much. Um, right, like you said, Ronald Klein, I literally texted him at eight o'clock last night and said, do you want to spend three and a half hours on a simulator with me? And without any hesitation, he said, yep. And Dustin Covington wasn't much far back from saying yes to, and we had a great, had a great group. And, uh, you know, I feel like not, not trying to toot my own horn, but I feel like the guys that finished up front, and Ronald and Dustin Covington, a lot of the other ones you see up here were the ones that should have been up here. They, they had great races and they've always been fast everywhere they go. So, and a huge shout out to you guys in the booth and LSRL for everything you guys do. It was a blast of a race and can't wait for the next one. Absolutely, buddy. But we say behind every great driver is a great woman. So we know that. And, you know, Mitchell coming from that uh, drag racing background, we, we know that it's a, it's a toll. But uh, yeah, thanks to her. And I mean, thank you for coming out and supporting the LSRL. Um, and, uh, and we'll see you at the next one for sure. And now we're going to bring up our, our number two finisher in Daniel Smallwood. Daniel, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, buddy. All right, Landon. Uh, you want to go ahead and take this interview with Daniel, and I'll go get uh, get Justin ready. All right, Daniel. Uh, obviously, you know, great finish, second place. You got to be happy about that. But, you know, you ran a great race. You're up front all day long. So you just want to take us through, you know, your day in, in general, just your strategy. And, you know, what more do you think you could have done at the end uh, to stop Justin Michael from winning that one? Uh, all day was – Kind of, we were kind of up the front. I know some of these guys try to stay in the back, and I just kind of went into mentality to just try to lead every lap. And 
it got me wrecked a few times, but uh, we came back with a fast repair and just kind of we all single filed out, and I was in the lead and saving as much fuel as possible. And come down to that last stop, uh, after the last stop, me and Justin teamed up actually to help each other, and uh, something happened with our with uh, jeans back there at the end. It broke me and him away from the pack, and that lapper uh, was helping us pull away even more. And uh, they they started catch us, Mitchell and uh, Klein did. Um, but coming out of four, I just I didn't want to wreck both of us and give it to Mitchell and Klein. So I threw a little block, but he had the lapper helping him. And uh, just he's a good racer. I got respect for him. And uh, him being able to get beside me, it just kind of just let him get by me with the lapper. Yeah, we kind of set it up here in the booth. There really wasn't much you could do when you have, you know, the guy behind you. You knew he had help, so we just knew that the only way you really had a chance is if you were going to have to throw a, a pretty major block on him at the end. But uh, is there anyone you like to shout out or think? Uh, I got to thank you guys for uh, broadcasting and everybody for putting this race on. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was kind of hairy there at the start, but uh, we got through it. Um, I really wanted to put this paint scheme in victory lane with it being the 20th anniversary of Dale dying and everything but uh we came up second and i think we did a pretty good job yeah absolutely and we mentioned that during the race man it was really cool to see uh, that car with that paint scheme up front and for the most part absolutely dominating as the dominator would in this race so um and also said the same thing from start to finish man i said you know small was one of those guys it's he's not going to stay in the back he's going to make some some dicey moves to stay up front and uh, it, it kind of fits your profile as a driver to, to run that uh, that paint scheme here again on that 20th anniversary. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but uh, man, just really cool. Uh, thank you for coming out and, and supporting us. Um, winner of $75 put up by Wilder Graphics and uh, LSRL, man. So congratulations on that. I know you wish you could have brought home that win, but uh, you won hell of a wheel, man. We know that for sure. And hopefully we'll see you back at the next one. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, and now we're bringing in uh, our, our winner, Justin Michael. Justin, do you have a copy? Yes, sir. How are you? Man, I, well, I'm, I'm not as good as you. I can guarantee that after uh, three and a half hours of sitting here and calling some dicey racing, uh, especially at the beginning, uh, to, to watch what you did and the move you were able to make coming out of four there, man, just fantastic. Not a lot of guys that can pull that off, especially against a driver like Daniel Smallwood. So, uh, you know, just tell us about what you were thinking coming into this race to start. Um, how did that work out for you? What didn't work out for you? Uh, and, and then just kind of walk us through what you were thinking on that last lap. Yeah, I tell you, the... Um... We came in thinking uh, just surviving the first half, and that's kind of what it took after the first half. You know, everybody kind of calmed down. You know, uh, a lot of people dropped out, so that that helped a ton. And um, But we had some damage there, and <clears throat> that was really affecting our fuel mileage. So we had to stop pretty much one lap earlier than, than the pack, and it was coming down to it. I didn't know if I was actually going to make it or not, but I ended up having, you know, one lap extra in the tank. So um definitely kind of stressful there that that whole time you know wondering what was going to happen especially if we got a green white checker which i thought was going to happen there with that wreck a couple to go um so but uh but yeah after that wreck happened we just i was thinking to myself it, either i fight him side by side or you know just hang back and that way nobody catches us and i can try to just take it off a of four and you know just a kind of a move that a lot of people you know do to hang off their quarter panel there get some air and really make that slingshot pass there off four yeah, man, it was, it was really impressive. We saw the lap car, Dan Whip behind you. We were hoping he was going to help you out a little bit coming across start finish line. It looked like he did there for a second. Um, but for the most part, you're just catching that side draft off of Smallwood. But but being patient uh, with your uh, fast repair, too, we did notice, you know, hey, you saw you coming up through the pack and you could have jumped out with that, uh, with that car and probably gone around the pack, but you had a bunch of rear end damage. And then we Next thing we do, we know we look up in first place and there you are and the car is crystal clear and, and pretty and clean. So we knew you'd save that fast repair for later on in the race. So great strategy there, man. Uh, congratulations on the win. Um, you know, butt kicker for putting this thing on, donating a butt kicker for uh, the win of this race. And 
man, just uh, just an awesome job by you. Uh, anybody out there that you want to thank sponsors, um, family members, anything like that, buddy? Yeah, we definitely appreciate Buck Ecker for putting the uh, putting the race on and giving out uh, that or, or some money if I guess if somebody already had one. But uh, you know, just thank uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, track racing for uh, for a sponsorship, uh, JW Racing for for helping us out there, uh, Michael Jeans and all them for also sticking with us there. You know, with the at the end of the race, uh, my friend Darren out there watching, he always watches all my races and he stuck through it the entire time. So uh, so appreciate that and uh, yeah, just everybody out there watching, we appreciate it. All right. We know Darren had to sit there for a long time, man. A lot of dicey stuff to, to see you come up to the front, but man, heck of a drive, heck of a win. Uh, you know, thanks for coming out, supporting the LSRL, Wild, uh, Wilder Graphics, and uh, all that power by Butt Kicker, man. So congratulations. Great run, and we'll hope to see you back next time. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait for next year. We'll, we'll definitely be doing it again. 10-4, buddy. Have a good one. You too, guys. Thanks. All right, Landon, so that pretty much sums it up, man. After a lot of action early, uh, you know, again, who keeps their car clean to come to the start-finish line and take that checkered flag? Uh, it ends up being Justin Michael barely over uh, Daniel Smallwood. So uh, an interesting race, I thought. Uh, a lot of different strategies, a lot of different ways, but uh, it came down to that last lap, which you couldn't ask for anything else, uh, I guess, at Daytona. Could you? I mean, absolutely not. I mean, that's that's the type of finishes you want is just those close, you know, right side by side finishes like that. You know, usually they have a pack of cars, but we got it with two cars, you know, after a little bit of trouble. And, you know, everyone here, the admins and race control did a great job tonight. And I mean, just a great job overall. We said, it, you know, at the beginning of the broadcast, one of those strategies and the biggest things tonight was saving that fast repair. And it really did help the 87 because he said it himself. He was like, you know, he was not getting better fuel mileage than the other guys because of that rear end damage. It was hurting him. And he saved it to the end, made sure he got it filled with fuel. And then his car was, you know, perfect for the end. And, you know, things went his way. And that's just how the Daytona is. Absolutely. Absolutely. But well, after three hours of, of watching these guys go around the track and uh, some accidents uh, in the beginning, we just want to say thank you to Lightspeed Racing League. I want to say a special thank you uh, for Matt Johnson hanging out here, running the cameras uh, in control behind the scenes uh, with Extreme Sim TV. I want a special shout out as well to the LSRL admins, uh, Joseph Murata and Johnny Wong sitting there in the, in the tower, uh, watching everybody throughout the race, making sure that um, we had clean racing as, as much as we could. Um, you know, great job by those guys. So we, uh, again, just thank the league, thank Butt, uh, Butt Kicker for sponsoring it, Wilder Graphics for sponsoring it as well, uh, Extreme Sim TV for putting this on. You know, and we'll, uh, we had a great time in Daytona. Glad our sim weather was better than our real weather. Hopefully you guys had some fun, but uh, we'll sign off from Daytona. Hopefully see you guys back here next time. Have a great night, everyone. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m.